And my, 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 as you see on the side of the screen right there, oh, we have an amazing conversation for you tonight. We have Stephanie Ribeiro in the house, as well as prominent Brazilians who are going to speak with us about some of the issues that exist with the lies being told about Brazilian women. We're going to talk about the culture. We're going to talk about the law. And we're going to talk about why one feminist woman decided to take up the cause of running the passport, the passport bros out of Brazil. So what we need to do first and foremost, you know what, listen, I'm going to give you all a chance to get in. But while we are waiting, uh, go ahead and say hello. Here we go. Say hello. Say it. Oh, let me I, hold on. I have to get your, your 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 mic from backstage to the front stage. So here. Here. All right. There we go. Say hello, Stephanie. Hello. All right. And right next to her is Tulio, and he's going to be translating for her because <clears throat> Stephanie, do you speak English? I don't speak English very well, but I understand. And I feel con vergonha. But she, is... she can. No, 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 no. That is the most English I have heard her speaking. Oh my goodness. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And we also have Helena, who is, oh, she's right here down at the bottom. Say hi. 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 Hi, hi everybody. And, and so it's a pleasure to be here. She's a psychologist and she is going to talk with us about she's going to talk with us about the about the the mentality and what is your specialty and what is it that you're going to tell us today, Helena? Well, I'm a psychotherapist and I think I can bring some experience not only by my profession uh, to talk a little bit about neurotic men. Mm -hmm. But also, I can bring my perspective from uh, Brazilian women, women uh, seeing uh, these kind of things happening uh, really next to me because I live in Rio and I am from Rio. And unfortunately, we see it a lot here in my city. So I think I can bring these two things. Talk a okay, little bit about okay. neurotic, man. <laughs> Wonderful. So thank you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of my housekeeping right now. I am going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the text out to the text notification squad so that we can get everybody here onto the broadcast right now. There's 300 people on YouTube that are tuning in, and I'm going to send the text out to the squad. And then we are going to start the entire conversation. So come in, grab yourself a, a drink, some popcorn, because this conversation is going to be good. Listen, when I tell you that the passport bros are sweating, they are sweating tonight because remember Austin went on and he was talking over and over oh Stephanie won't have a conversation with me Stephanie and we're going to find out exactly why she wouldn't speak with him and because we got her here tonight when others could not we're starting the conversation in earnest to bring to, to bridge the gap between Brazil the United States and what's going on with the image that these guys are, are sullying of Americans, Black American men, American people in general overseas. So bear with me for just one moment. Let me get this link out to everyone, and then we shall go from there. I appreciate all of you showing up early. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of the people who have shared this. Right now, we are, we've crossed over 300 on YouTube, but this broadcast is going to go up well above 2,000. So go ahead and tag somebody. Share the video. Share it to your groups. Um, a lot of you are in Brazil groups, so share it to your Brazil travel groups. Share it to the groups where you are talking about the Manosphere and Passport Bros. And we are going to give me just a few moments. Let me just get the link and then get this out to everyone. Give me just a moment, please. Whew. Man, when I tell you... All right. 
And then after we get this link out, we're going to go live on all of the other platforms. So, you know, mm -hmm. one of the things that's been very concerning is that the passport bros don't know that what they're doing is actually a promotion of sexual tourism. They're pretending as if, you know, they want to get married, et cetera, et cetera. But they've been doing this for years. Where are the wives? What are they what they're doing is they're leaving a trail of broken, broken hearts, broken people, um, broken expectations, bro just a lot. So um, here, let me get this. Give me just one more moment to get all of this set out so that we can have a packed show tonight. I'm just getting the titles. I'm a little bit nervous myself because I'm not really sure why I'm nervous. I'm nervous because, you know, I, you, you all know that I love it when my broadcast goes smoothly and it's unpredictable whenever you're live. So I want to I want this broadcast to be a resource for people to be able to draw upon. That's what I want. I want people to be able to draw upon the resource of this broadcast. And so the expectation on me and myself is pretty high because I want I want I want people to be able to see and have the conversation because I think what they're doing is very dangerous. It's dangerous for the women. It's dangerous for us. And it's dangerous. It, 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 it's just, it's dangerous for the, the air of just living in 2020, 2023. So we're yeah. going to clear up some misconceptions today. I'm going to get the text has been sent out. Let me get this link up on telegram so that we send it out to the people there because i want everybody to be a part of this broadcast so while i'm doing this take your time to start sharing right now stephanie tulio helena make sure that you all have shared this to your network shared the link so that they can be here and be a part of the conversation because stephanie will be speaking in in portuguese so the people who are watching will be able to to understand her uh, give me just one more moment. We're almost done with the links. Let me just grab one the link one more time. And then we are going to get cracking. There's the text that just went out. You heard that in the background. Let me send the link up here. Perfect. Oh, I forgot to put the picture up. Darn it. All right. I got to get the picture up on the broadcast. All right. So here. Here. And here. All right, so all of those links have been sent behind the scenes. Let me just get the, we're going to get the thumbnail updated. And then from there, we are going to, after we get the thumbnail updated, we are, oh, damn it. All right. Give me one second. After we get the thumbnail updated, we are going to then, All right. Jesus. After we get the thumbnail updated, we're going to go live on all of the platforms. All right. Thank perfect. You, so that went by without a hitch. Let me just go ahead and get. All right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. 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 Let's see. Hmm. All right. All right. Tô vendo aqui. Ah. All right. Wonderful. Perfect. 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 All right. So we got all of that out. So I uh, see I'm sweating. I'm so nervous. All right. Here. So let's go ahead and get live on these other platforms. All right, here we go. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. All right, we are live on Twitch. We're live on Twitter. We're live on Facebook and we are live on LinkedIn. Welcome in everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. I am your host, Tanya TKO. I am a self-love specialist from TanyaTKO.com. 
I hope you learn how to love yourselves and one another. On this channel, we use viral topics to teach you about self-love in your own life. And guess what? There's a story that went viral this week. What was that story, you ask? Oh, let me show you. Oh, the passport bros have gotten into the news and they've gotten onto my radar. I'm gonna show you one of the leaders of this passport bro revolution. They tell you that they're interested in going overseas to find wives. But no, it's much more sinister than that. I'm going to show you a slew of images. Look, the person that you see to my, to my right or left, depending on where you're looking at it, his name is Austin Holloman. Austin Holloman has made a name for himself as one of the leaders of the Passport Bro Revolution at just 23 tender years old. He has revealed himself to be a person who has questionable morals. He's revealed himself to be a person that he says had a sex drive at six years old in which he was looking at grown women. He said he developed a fetish. If you haven't seen it, Go watch my the, the last two broadcasts that we did. He developed a fetish for Brazilian women from seeing them in pornography. And then from there, he was he was he was lusting after them. He'd wanted to go to Brazil. Then he made his way to Brazil. And instead of going over there in earnest and forming community, right? He showed other men how they can come over and get easy vagina. Right now, we have behind the scenes. So, so look, he issued this apology. Oh, I'm not going to put Brazilian women's names in my mouth no more. He, oh, he got on the elevator. He's heartbroken because he was called out. And guess who he was called out by? Oh, the great Stephanie Ribeiro, who we have right now behind the scenes. Stephanie! <laughs> Stephanie. Ai, nervoso. <laughs> this is the feminist that ran this man red, that had the man up on the broadcast with his brow sweating bullets, apologizing, promising to never even mention Brazilian women again. Stephanie, welcome. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome to the broadcast. Welcome. Wow. Welcome. So what we're going to do, and right next to her is, introduce yourself, Tulio. You are? Uh, I'm the husband. Husband <laughs> and, and also... boyfriend. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Husband. Yeah, so, you know, there were life. there were many people who were saying that she was married to a white man, that she was American herself, that all of these other things, that she was a racist, et cetera, et cetera. There were a lot of things that were being said. And as a special treat, we have Helena right here. Do you see her right below me? Helena is a Hi. psychologist who is going to talk to us about the pathological thinking of narcissists of. Tell us who else you are going to, to tell us about today. Well, hi, Tonya. Hi, everybody. Hi. I think uh, today we have an opportunity to talk about uh, neurotic men and how, how the neurotic man can uh, look to women through the glasses of uh, a pathological glasses. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can talk about it. Okay. That's a lot to talk. Thank you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So what we're going to do right now is I want everybody to get themselves geared up. Thank you to everybody who has shared this broadcast and tagged somebody. We are going to jump into the heart of the matter. First, we're going to take a quick one minute commercial break for the text notification squad. And then after that, we're going to jump into the conversation. So during this one minute, use this as the opportunity to tag somebody. Tag some of the passport bros because they had a lot to say, a lot of slanderous words about this woman, a lot of crazy things to talk about how the women in Brazil liked how they were being treated. But no, 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 no. We're going to hear from Brazilian women themselves about the culture. Are Brazilian women, quote unquote, easy? We're going to talk about the differences in, in, in the dating strategies over there. And then we're also going to talk about the difference between so socioeconomic class and status and the types of women that these men are targeting. So one minute commercial and we will be right back. 
Are you tired of missing Tanya TKO's live videos? Arriving late when the video is well underway or about to end? Are you fatigued of only seeing the live video randomly while perusing YouTube and Facebook? Or worse, are you randomly unsubscribed? Well now, you can get a text notification whenever I go live. No longer are we dependent on the algorithm of these fickle platforms for just $1.99 a month US and Canada or $4.99 a month international, you get a personalized text message 15 minutes before each live show. Now, you can show up early with the text squad, meet other people from all over the world, and get invited to secret broadcasts off-platform. Most importantly, support your favorite independent creator. Go to TanyaTKO.com and click on text. Join the TKO Tech Squad today for just $1.99 a month US and Canada or $22 a year if you pay in advance. $4.99 a month international, $50 a year if you pay in advance. You'll never again be tardy to the party. I'll see you on the next broadcast. TanyaTKO.com for its next things. Welcome back. Welcome back. <clears throat> this show is broadcast live. We do most of our shows live. And what supports the channel is you being here on time. And one of the ways that you're able to be here and be a part of the live show is by being a part of the text notification squad. It's $1.99 per month plus fees or $4.99 a month plus fees if you're international or $22 for the year or $50 for the year. There are also free notifications that you can get. The links are in the description. I'll type it here. For you all, www.tanyatko.com forward slash text. And we're also going to be taking apples so that you can have your comments read on the screen. I took that quick little commercial break so that I could fix up the screens behind the scenes because they were messing up. And so now I got them fixed. Perfect. Look at that. <laughs> I did it within that one minute. I'm so happy. Yes. So let's get the conversation started. We're going to start with you, Stephanie. I see that there's four minutes left on our countdown. So in the four minutes, I want you to just tell the people a little bit about yourself. And then after that, you all know how to jump out and then come back in so that we can continue the broadcast, right? Okay, go for the mm -hmm. Tá, eu sou a Stephanie Ribeiro. Eu tenho 29 anos e sou arquiteta. Aqui no Brasil, eu tenho um programa de TV e isso já é importante de falar, porque muitos desses homens que estão me xingando estão dizendo que eu quero aparecer em cima do Austin. Well, she's Stephanie Ribeiro. She's 29 years old. She's an architect, but uh, she didn't say that. Also writer and also feminist. And she's a host, a TV host of a program of architecture and decoration. So uh, a lot of the guys that um, probably some bros um, they kind of uh, calling her, uh, say, saying that she's talking this because she wants to appear, she wants to be famous, but actually she's already famous, she's already a public uh, person, everybody actually knows her, so, mm. well, that's what she does. É, oh. e isso é importante, eu acho importante dizer, porque inclusive a mãe do Austin veio me xingar nas minhas redes sociais dizendo que eu queria ficar famosa em cima do filho dela, mas eu não preciso ficar famosa em cima do filho dela. Eu já tenho meu trabalho, eu já tenho meu dinheiro, eu já tenho a minha casa, eu já tenho o meu sucesso. O que acontece é que eu sou uma mulher negra feminista no Brasil, assim como várias outras que existem no meu país, e a gente estudou, a gente consegue falar por nós, e a gente ficou muito indignada quando a gente viu o conteúdo desses homens, porque era extremamente ofensivo, e a, o impacto do turismo sexual ele é muito grande nos corpos negros e femininos do Brasil. <laughs> well, uh, she said that she, she doesn't need to be famous because she already has her job, her work, her house, her life. So it's not about this, not about to be famous to everybody knows, but it's about the fact that she's a feminist. And as a feminist, it's really important to set some, uh, some marks, some traits, you know, and the idea of the sexual tourism is something terrific. She was really horrified when she said she saw the pictures, the posts, the videos, and mm -hmm. these guys kind of come on, bring it on, come to Brazil. And, and as a feminist, as a black feminist, she understands that 
the worst, um, how could I say, the worst experience in terms of sexism is for the black women. So the black women suffers more the violence, the ignorance, the, the... E, inclusive, a gente tem um dado aqui no Brasil de que as jovens negras têm três vezes mais chances de serem estupradas. Então, todo o conteúdo de... que tem esse teor misógino, sexista, impacta muito a gente. E a gente já combateu várias coisas aqui no Brasil em relação a isso. Por exemplo, eu, junto com uma outra feminista negra brasileira, de Jamila Ribeiro, escrevemos um texto questionando a globeleza. E hoje não existe mais a globeleza na TV seminua, que era uma figura de uma mulher so, negra look, we're, we're, que we're running toda down, vez. We're oh. running down on the minute. Give a quick translation, and then you all are going to jump out of here, and then we're going to hear from Helena. Quick, quick translation, under one minute. Okay, uh, the black women has three times more uh, chances to be raped and uh, and in to Brazil. be in Brazil and to be violent. And she wow. she uh, uh, puts her feminism in front of the the the, the this question, uh, discussing and writing and also in Brazilian society making things uh, uh, to transform as the stereotypes and things concerning black women. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you so much for that. All right. So let us, let us jump real quick. What we're going to do is we are going to play the video that started it all. So remember, he had gone over to Brazil and he had put up a video. And in the video, he showed some Brazilian women on the beach. And when he was on the beach, he talked with them about he, he talked with them about how soon they would go home with a man. Right. So we're going to play that video. We're going to wait for our guests to come back in. And then we're going to um, and then we're going to hear from Helena and why this is a passion of hers. Right. So here is the video that started it all. This is the video that started it all right here. There might be, hold on, there might be a little bit of an echo. Let me just, because I have so many screens that I have to, and you know, I'm live producing right now, so I have to get the, the echo off. So give me just one second. Let me just get that back up for you all. Or, all right. And so you see, he doesn't see what's the matter with that. He doesn't understand why that's problematic. So we're going to have Stephanie explain why that's problematic. But first, let's hear from Helena, who is a licensed psychologist. She's going to talk with us about her specialty, which is going to be telling us about the... Um, she's going to be telling us about uh, neuroticism, narcissistic personality disorder. Come forward, Helena. Well, Tonya, I am thinking about it uh, since I uh, got to know this movement called Passport Bros. And from, from the perspective of psychology, I, I think that there's some kind of um, self-defense, uh, uh, neurotic ways of self-defense based on fear that mm. these men should have uh, for women that are really empowered so I think they are looking for women that uh, are in a level lower in terms of power so mm. they can feel lo a lot more secure to deal with them. So I think mm. the base is fear. So fear, but fear of what? Well, first of all, tell us about yourself. How long have you been a psychologist? How did this become a passion of yours? Well, I'm a psychologist for 20 20 years, actually, it's going to turn 22 years that I am a psychologist. And I think uh, my profession 
uh, helps me uh, to make some change in the world uh, as uh, I can. So my, I, I turn my profession into activism too. Uh, and my, I have some causes that I defend and I recently turned my, my knowledge uh, to help this cause. Oh, uh, other than that, I am a, a professional advisor and I do some lectures about many things in psychology. And I love my work because I learn every day with my patients and they are like the best books I could ever read in my life. And I am very fortunate to have this profession. And everything that I will share with you, I have to also give credit to my patients because they, uh, I, I learn so much with them. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. All right, so, Stephanie, um, what was it that made you decide because if you all don't know what's going on, Austin Holloman did that video and that video went viral. And she decided to put an end to, to what was going on. What was it that made you decide to, what was it about that video? Because this has been going on for some time, but what was it about that video that incited you to stand up? Fala perguntando por que que eu... É, o que que tinha naquele vídeo que fez você querer... Sim, entendi. Bom, é, na verdade, eu vi duas postagens dele que eu respondi e, e que me chocaram. Primeiro era esse vídeo que você mostrou, que a moça responde uma coisa que na nossa cultura é muito normal. É, o sexo no primeiro encontro não é uma coisa absurda no Brasil. Uh, well, the first, the first uh, video that she, she saw, uh, he was saying something really absurd, terrific, and the girl was answering him something which is normal like in our culture actually even in states uh it's kind of normal people have sex in af after the first date so she was answering about this e ele olhou para aquela situação de uma pergunta simples e ele falou peguem seus passaportes no sentido de tipo venham para cá e os comentários eram terríveis eram homens dizendo que estavam arrumando as malas e outros dizendo é tão fácil assim acessá-las. So she made the situation seems like you know it's really easy in Brazil to do this and there are a lot there were a lot of men uh, uh, um, on the chat saying oh get your grab your passports let's go over there let's let's have this let's get these girls because é tão fácil assim it's so, e, it's so easy in Brazil like this, you know, and he, he was making the situation seems like it's easy to come to Brazil because all the women, the women here are easy. E aí tinha uma outra postagem, quando eu fui ver, que ele colocava uma menina respondendo que ela preferia ter um encontro na praia. E ele dizia, levem essa menina para o encontro, custa só 10 ou 20 dólares. I'm sorry, because I get like, it's... It's a lot of absurd things. Well, uh, there's another video that he kind of interviewed the girls and he kind he asked her, uh, asks her like, uh, where do you want to have a date? And she answers, oh, I want to go to the beach, whatever. Uh, not with him, you know, place that she likes. And he says to the guys, you know, to the, the public, the passport. So bring, uh, take her to the beach. It's just $10 to get her, you know, like, ele nem falou levem a praia, levem ela para um encontro. Ela oh, usou date. Take, uh, take, uh, take her to the date. It's just ten dollars. Uh, ten or twenty. Ten or twenty. Like yes. bringing the idea, and it's not like a, we are not uh, um, talking about prostitution, the people that will sex work. But the thing is, uh, become the, transforming the girl as a prostitute, but she never said, she never, you know, put herself in the situation. Isso para mim foi muito grave e eu comentei para ele falando você tá fazendo uma coisa super absurda e no Brasil nós temos leis, nós temos mesmo leis, né, Helena, de assédio, a gente tem uma lei de defesa, contra, é, de defesa da mulher que é muito grande, nós Sim. temos leis de inúmeras leis, inclusive eu disse, a gente tem até delegacias da mulher e aí os seguidores dele riram de mim e disseram 
todas as brasileiras estão à venda. É isso mesmo. So she said that it's wrong. Like she was commenting, with answering the the, the videos and on uh, on chat, saying, "Well, why are you doing it's wrong? It's terrible." And here in Brazil, we also have laws concerning this laws to protect women, laws to protect the women against violence, laws against the the sex tourism and and, and, and things like this. So, uh, the delegacy of important the, uh, uh, the station against the women violence, uh, police station to uh, against the women uh, women violence, and his crowd, like the people that were commenting on the chat, they were laughing at, making fun of it, like nah, th this is ridiculous. All the women in Brazil are prostitutes. The women in Brazil, really? the women, really? it is yeah. a sale. Sale are for sale. The women there are for sale. So, like, uh, so, so I have a question. Women. I have a question. You, um, you said that it's typical for a woman in Brazil to have intercourse after the first date. Is you said that that? Yeah, typical. Pera, in, in eu posso explicar. Of, uh, é, no Brasil, a gente tem uma comunidade muito grande de religiosos, por exemplo. A gente tem muitas pessoas que são evangélicas, que são é, católicas e que são pessoas que levam para uma cultura mais conservadora. Isso existe no Brasil. Mas também existem mulheres falando sobre seus corpos e sobre sua liberdade. E a gente tem uma cultura com o corpo, com a sensualidade e até com a sexualidade que talvez sejam diferentes mesmo. A gente tem, por exemplo, camisinha sendo dada no metrô pelo governo, gratuitamente. A gente fala muito sobre sexo e tenta falar sobre sexo de uma forma informativa, inclusive. É... E não é um problema da nossa cultura uma mulher fazer sexo, sabe? É... Tem pessoas que são super conservadoras, o nosso ex-presidente era super conservador, e isso seria um problema. Mas, de um geral... Well, hold on, é... hold on. You're saying a lot. So let's get that part translated yeah. first yeah. so we can I know what, what we're talking yeah, about. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I will talk like... Right, right. The thing is, uh, we have a lot of conservatives in Brazil. We have a lot uh -huh. of religious people, especially in the inner country of this... The, the inner country, I'll say, we have. But also, especially in the big cities, we have a kind of tradition to discuss about sexuality. So it's not something new. We have been talking about sexuality, the woman sexuality, the thing like for decades. So women, not just the feminists, but women in large cities, they are nowadays, like the last like year, something like this, they are uh, taking more opportunity of the idea that they own their own bodies, their own sexuality. And they are discussing about this. Like the thing is in Brazil, we, major especially the major major cities we we are not afraid to talk about our our sexuality in, okay. a, in a health in a health uh, public service you know yes. it's not just about uh, craziness no, mas é importante falar sobre a coisa também do preservativo que então, a gente falar, é isso então eu estava introduzindo falar nisso né? because sexuality is a health uh, service uh, uh, program and uh, for example there are a lot of condoms that is uh, that is shared you know, because we are discussing about uh, I, uh, ISTs here in Brazil. Oh, long, okay. Um, when you say shared, you don't mean used by more than one person. You mean passed out. No, no, no. Are... Hit, uh, done, like, oh, used, okay. Used it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come okay. on, no. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no, I I've, I've heard many things. There are people who are turning them inside out and using them a second time. <laughs> no, no, no. So, it's, okay. It's, it's included. <laughs> like okay. you have free condoms gave by the, 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 the government to avoid people get a, a, a ISTs. So okay. discussing about sexuality in Brazil is something important because it's a health question. It's right, but the question moment. the question was so and Helena, you're a Brazilian woman. Is it customary for Brazilian women to have intercourse after the first date? Well, I think uh, I think what is customary is that we have a choice, a real choice, uh, not a, a pattern choice or something that you, you, we only have to execute, like uh, the social uh, morality says to us. So I think we really have. Uh, well, not everybody. It's different. It's different for different uh, social classes. 
but uh, mo many of us have a real choice. So if I like a man, if I am turned on by him, I, maybe I decide to go with him, but it's not uh, about his strategy. It's not about, uh, it's, it's my choice. I think it's a very, uh, we have to consider the singularity of this manner. Uh, so it, it's not because that girl in the video said, that, okay, I would go now, that that's the Brazilian way. No, I think uh, we have to put the singularity in this manner. And I think that what is customary more and more is that we have the choice. E eu acho que é importante a gente pensar que é uma questão de escolha, que a gente cada vez mais fala sobre isso em revistas, em programas de TV. As mulheres famosas brasileiras falam dessa questão da escolha, da sexualidade, da masturbação, inclusive de uma forma supernatural. Aqui no Brasil a gente entende como uma coisa natural, que a gente deveria falar com naturalidade. Ele está colocando numa posição quase como se o sexo também fosse uma coisa, sabe, surreal e absurda, a ponto de, de parecer que, para ele, uma mulher fazer uma escolha sexual e ter a sua sexualidade livre é chocante, sabe? Ok. Uh, we talk a lot of about sexuality in TVs, in magazines, we talk about masturbation, we talk about pressure, the parts of the body, so... Uh, we have been talking about sexuality a long time, the idea of choice that women can choose, etc. So it's also absurd, that, as, she, uh, as uh, she said, that for these guys, for these passport bros, etc., they, they think that this is wrong. The idea that the women can choose, can want, desire something and say that want or don't want, it's absurd for them. Like the idea that women make choices so yeah yes yeah. yeah i think i think it's uh it's uh something about well uh she is really in the position of an object so it's not about choice it's about oh here in brazil that's the way it is uh because they they are have trouble seeing the person that's talking to them they are they don't they are not seeing the person they are seeing like it was a product and wow brazilian okay. products has this kind characteristics well you know what yeah. i'm going to show you all something right now right this is a video right so this is a video of a guy who went to brazil and he got lucky and he decided he was never going to come back to the to the united states again because of how well he was treated by the Brazilian women. So here, let me let me play a little bit of this for you. All right, so I want to thank King Brujo for this because he sent this video to me. He saved these videos. And so look at this. Oh, hold on. They're saying they can't hear? Oh, oh, give me one second. I'm sorry. I got to get the sound on. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. Let me see. So you're saying you can't hear? Oh, okay. My bad. I had the wrong button pressed because you know I'm doing a lot behind the scenes. I apologize. I apologize. Let me, I will do it again. We'll do it again. We'll do it again because I want you all to see and hear it. Don't worry. We got time. We got time. We'll do it right now. I've been in so Brazil here. for almost 72 hours now, and I want to say that I want to stay here. I no longer want to live in the United States. Um, I feel a lot safer. I feel a lot better. I can be myself. Like, I was approaching these women, and I almost tripped over the chair, and they didn't care. 
They, I still got their number, and I'm meeting one of them tonight. So thank you to the real King Brujo. Check him out on on TikTok. He's been going at them for quite some time. And then so that guy, he 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 met, he said it's easier to meet Brazilian women. They're nicer. He's kind of corny and he tripped on a chair. Stephanie's face. <laughs> he said he tripped on a chair. So here's another video. Here. One more thing. A lot of stuff you deal with in the States, you don't deal with that here. You don't. Like, women are more, they're more reasonable, as, as I was saying. So come to Brazil and have a good time. It's Lambda, 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 and... All right. So here, so, so, this is, so this is how, so this is what it started as. So what is, what's the problem with what he's doing right there? He's saying the women here are nice. I, 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 I was, I tripped, I made a mistake and they were still nice to me. What, what's the matter with this? Eu acho que já começa pela comparação, sabe? Que já me incomodava também nos vídeos do Austin. Toda hora ele fica comparando mulheres brasileiras com mulheres americanas e no fundo ele não respeita nenhuma dessas mulheres. Peraí, é importante o que você está falando, eu acho que tem que traduzir tudo. The first thing that bothers her is the idea of comparison. So he's all the time comparing like a Brazilian woman, American woman, whatever woman. So the idea of comparison sounds like he's bringing a point about the respect or the admiration. But the thing is, he doesn't expect, he doesn't respect any woman, even in America and even in Brazil. And this, uh, it, this is something that that's terrible. That's, that's important to say. But what makes you feel he doesn't respect because he's giving praise? Que você, o que você acha que ele não respeita? Não, eu, eu, é que são, assim, é muito nítido para mim que eles, todos esses homens que, que estão criando esses conteúdos, estão falando sobre mulheres brasileiras, porto-riquenhas, tailandesas, colombianas, colombianas fili, da Filipinas, eles objetificam mulheres e eles é, categorizam mulheres. Como se eles estivessem indo no supermercado e escolhendo. Eu gosto mais desse suco. E, ah, mas tem aquele outro ali. Será que eu não pego aquele um pouquinho? Ele tá um pouco mais barato. É como se fosse isso para eles. The thing is, they objectify women. They, they, uh, they treat them as a mark, as a, an object. So, oh, this object is nicer than this one. I want this now and this is more easier now. Another one, oh, it's difficult, but it's chilly. So that, that's the idea that the way that they made the comparison puts the women as an object. So we have the object in Brazil, we have the object in States, we have the object in Colombia, and they do, they do this with all the countries that they are going through and uh, uh, traveling through. E isso é tão nítido que para eles é uma questão de exercício de poder. Então eles vêm para os nossos países latinos com a ideia também de que o, o valor do dinheiro que eles têm nos Estados Unidos, aqui ele é muito maior. Então é isso que dá para eles o exercício do poder. E eles se sentem nessa posição de poder. E eles vão deixando um lastro de destruição afetivo, é, porque essas mulheres também se apaixonam, é, familiar, porque a gente não sabe até que ponto. Já tem histórias aqui no Brasil de homens que estão deixando filhos. Calma, você falou bastante. <risos> The thing is, uh, this is a thing. This is something about power. The idea that these men can go to a countries that they think or understand that these women are poor or in a worse condition than them, and they can uh, uh, exercise this power. And there's also something about the currency. For example, uh, one dollar today is five reais. You know, so here in Brazil, uh, if you have like one thousand, it's 5,000 in Brazil. So they think that they can exercise this power because they think that they kind of have money. Most of them not, but they have more money here and they are uh, uh, making this and also uh, let uh, uh, a big tale of destruction, affective destruction. Uh, um, sons, some of them are, pre are, are, are pregnant the, the women and make babies around these countries, like, uh, uh, around the city. So, so they're impregnating them? 
Yeah, impregnating them. And also the exposition because of these videos, these photos, the way that they are showing the women, uh, uh, as we saw in Brazil, uh, also, you know, it's a tale of okay. destruction. A gente, eu só explicando essa história de gravidez, eles procuram também americanos que moram no Brasil. Então, um amigo meu que é americano, e acho que é importante dizer isso, a gente tem amigos americanos, é, e eles estão super preocupados com isso, porque eles moram no Brasil e respeitam a nossa cultura. Um deles disse que um desses caras já tem uma, uma mulher grávida dele em Salvador. Então, é totalmente irresponsável. Well, the thing is, uh, we, we have some American friends living in Brazil, people that are right, they respect our country, really interesting. And they are worried too, because these guys is come here, they try to get uh, into the, the, the American community here in Brazil, but the American community kind of, okay, no, you know, like they understand that they are not cool people and they are impregnating the girls here. Like there's uh, this friend of, uh, of us, Told about the story in Salvador, the city that Austin was actually. Uh, Mas não é o Austin. A, another guy, it's not him, but another guy went there, the same thing, passa part bros, etc., and impregnated the girl and let her, you know, just flew for, to uh, uh, another country. So that's, uh, well. Wow. So you know what, Helena, let's jump over to you as a psychologist. What is your take on? What may be going on? What, what, why do you think this is happening like this? Oh, we can't hear you. Sorry, uh, I muted so it doesn't hear, give echo, but I, um, I was listening to Stephanie and I was thinking of, uh, about this pregnant girl and I am thinking about we dealing with, sex, with sexist in our culture and our country, we already are dealing with it. And sometimes I, I don't, I, I'm not saying that it is all, all the time, but sometimes the experiencing with a foreign guy, maybe it brings like a fantasy that he is the Prince Charm because maybe he is the different one he is coming from another country maybe he is, he's going to value me more and so uh, i think this lack of uh, this effective uh, affective destruction wow uh, it's it's really cruel but uh, answering what you, you were asking tonya uh, i was uh, watching the video you put here and I ask, uh, I saw the guy claiming that here he can be himself. And I am thinking, well, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Why do you have to go to a country that is de a developing country? Why do you have to come from a developed country to a developing country and encounter uh, women that maybe are more vul vulnerable? At least yeah. economically. At well, least so economically. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what they're saying. So they're saying that because the culture is more traditional, you know, the men take care of the women and play the traditional male role, and the women play the traditional female role. That the culture creates submissive women who know how to take care of a man who are very gentle and feminine. This is what they're saying. And we're going to read the apples because um, there are people who, who are sending the cash apps through. And some of the passport bros are in the comments. Right now we have 2,000 people watching on YouTube. We have 100 people watching on Facebook. So there are a lot of people in here. So if you want to get your comment in, if you want me to read it on air, just it's dollar sign Tanya TKO, and I'm going to read the cash apples in a moment, but that's what they're saying. I'm going to show you a video, right? And in this video, um, the, there's a woman. So there's a, so there's a guy he has, let me see how the, the best way to get this up on the screen so that everybody can see it. Um, cause I saved the video because I didn't want them to delete it cause they started deleting their videos. Um, after, after yesterday, they started deleting them because, you, you know, they, they're so incendiary. Let's see. Uh, 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 
give me one second. Here it is. Here it is. Ugh. It's pulling it from my phone. Ah! It's not gonna, it's not gonna let me play it from the phone. But you know what? I can put it right here up close, right? If you can, if you can see that. So she doesn't know this guy, but she's kissing him. She's in the in the restaurant, right? She's a server in the restaurant. Can you all see that? And um, so she's just enamored with him. And then so she's rubbing on his bald head. She's kissing it. She's hugging him. She even takes her hair and starts flapping it all around so they could see she has long hair. And she's just so enamored to be near him, right? And so what man wouldn't want to come over for this type of treatment? <laughs> Tulio, your face. Tulio, your face. Yeah, I'm really, yeah, I'm, I'm really sad. I, I, I will something. I will say something about this because um, also I research. If, if you could just, if you could just translate real quick to Stephanie, the question oh, is, yeah. oh, you understand, Stephanie? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But, yeah, no, I, I, I would answer because uh, this is something that is, is really uh, uh, important when you we discuss about. Uh, masculinity is like how these guys are reproducing the idea of power uh, focused in a project of masculinity of the white man. And this is something really interesting because when I lived, when I was uh, used to live in the States, I lived in Nashville and then in New York, I remember some conversations about the idea that the black man doesn't want a black woman because the white women are more uh, traditional. They take care of them. They make the, the, the traditional role. They cook, they blah, blah. You know, the idea of the women submiss uh, submissive, whatever. Right. So they using these arguments is basically the same thing, you know? So what they are transporting, you know? Okay, now it's not more the white girls in America and after yards, the Latina girls in America. Now the women in Brazil, in Colombia, in Filipinas, they are doing this for us. But what is the same line that we see here? This discourse, this idea that we are perceiving our sense of uh, ownership, our sense of uh, um, human representing or um, um, imitating the idea of the, the project of power of the white man, you know? So this is sad for me. And also it's, it's you know, yeah, because we have a lot of discussions, we have a lot of publications, we have a lot of great people, especially in the States. I, I made a translation of a book from Well Hooks, for example, Well Hooks, a mm -hmm. lot of texts about talking about masculinities and the idea that how we, we should surpass this project, how, how, how we should, uh, uh, we black men should not be uh, um, feel represented by the idea that we want the power, the owner. And when I see something like this, passport bros, this type of the publications, this type of posts, the type of arguments. Oh, the women in Brazil, they are traditional. They will take care about us. Inclusive, I have a point about this. Yeah, é muito engraçado, porque a Tônia não sabe, mas eu, eu conversei com algumas moças e elas disseram que essas, mesmo moças que ele interpelou, elas acharam ele machista, porque elas sabem perceber o machismo. E, ele ignora que as mulheres brasileiras não são o que ele acha. É, uma delas me disse que achou super machista um comportamento dele e, e ele, não, ele achou que no Brasil ele não ia encontrar feministas, assim... E, e no fundo, mesmo essas, acho que você traduz mais de uma forma mais simples, mas mesmo as mulheres mais simples, elas já têm hoje uma noção básica das coisas, porque a gente fala de feminismo em novelas, que é mídia de massa. The, okay. <laughs> the, uh, even the girls that he kind of interviewed, they, they, uh, Stephanie could talk with some of them, and they said that he's, he's sexist, like they could perceive the way that he talks, the things that he talked, like they could perceive, and he thought 
that there was no feminism in Brazil, which is ridiculous because we discuss feminism even in soap operas. Even though we are far from the real condition, the, the real uh, uh, equality for the women, we discuss uh, feminism publicly in Brazil. So even the girls that he interviewed, that he, 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 he thought that he could uh, deceive, these, these girls uh, understood that he, he, he was sexist, the way that he talked some things, okay. the, the way- so let, me ask you know. you, so let me ask you this question. Is that illegal? Is it illegal for them to say, wow, you know, the women here are so nice, come over and meet all these nice women is that illegal because you got you you got the um you got the authorities involved correct um for promotion of sex tourism so is it no, oh go ahead no brasil não é, é, é turismo sexual não é ilegal uhum. tipo não é considerado crime o que a gente entende que é crime é assédio é exposição da imagem da pessoa de uma forma que corrompa a moral dela. E a gente também entende que a promoção à prostituição é crime. Então, se prostituir no Brasil, não é crime. Mas você dizer que, ah, esta mulher está aqui e, e, está, e ela é uma prostituta, vem aqui pegar esta mulher, isso é crime. Porque o ato de você promover a prostituição no Brasil é crime. Porque, no fundo, a gente está dizendo que é a cafetinagem. Uh -huh. yeah. The thing is... Uh, in Brazil, to be a prostitute is not a crime, but to be a pimp is to promote prostitution. And the thing is, behind the sex tourism, there is this promotion of prostitution. So the thing, uh, it's, it's not illegal to say, oh, come here, because it's not this, but it's how this is connected with the promotion of sex, tu sex tourism and the prostitution and the uh, abuse. Foi como eu disse, a gente fez realmente uma denúncia, a gente levou para uma promotora e agora a lei vai ter que interpretar todas as coisas que ele disse e que ele postou. Então, uma coisa importante. Sorry, I forgot another thing important that she okay. said. And there is this abuse, this, this the promotion of prostitution. This is a, is a problem. This is illegal. And also to expose people without the permission. This is illegal. So uh, that, that we have wait, a law to film from... to film people without their permission is illegal. Exactly. This is illegal. We yes. have a new law ex, uh, actually uh, talking about this. So. E, inclusive, eu ia dizer que essas leis, elas se interrelacionam. Mm -hmm. então, a, então, uma promotora vai avaliar. Se você está expondo uma pessoa sem permissão, isso fere a moral dela, vai se agravando a situação. Mm -hmm. E se você não, mesmo que eu não seja uma prostituta, mas, vamos supor, exemplo, o Túlio faz uma postagem dizendo... Ah, a Stephanie está aí, custa 10 dólares. É, mesmo que eu não seja uma prostituta e mesmo que ele não queira dizer que eu sou, que eu estou sendo prostituída, se ele deu margem para isso, ele, a, a lei pode entender que ele está promovendo a prostituição. So the as coisas se interrelacionam. Uh, the, pro, the prosecutor, uh, they are analyzing this uh, because they have to, 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 to understand the interpretation of what this kind of movies, the videos, with what this, what this kind of posts, if they can give the idea that you are promoting the prostitution with that person, you know? And oh. even there's the, mor the moral stuff, for example, if you film someone without permission, with this kind of message, you can, you know, put in this person the idea for others that we watch that she is a prostitute, even, even though if she's not. You know, okay, with all the Helena, so jump this... in here and 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 give your your thoughts on what you've been hearing and what you know um, from being a psychologist in the field. Yeah, I am thinking about co uh, cognitive disson dissonance mm -hmm. because uh, uh, we have a saying here in, in Brazil that it's so it's as old as walking ahead, uh, tão velho quanto andar para frente. <laughs> this uh, this separation between uh, the the wife and the mistress, mm -hmm. and and I think it's it's uh, like different versions of this splitting, because uh, it's really a difficulty that they have to deal with a with a woman uh, as she is as with the person, 
because uh, actually maybe they are fearing their own uh, emotions. So uh, be, if, I, if I like, uh, if I am a man from this movement and I like a woman and she is traditional and I am going to marry her, uh, still I, am, I like her, but I put her in this place, in this condition, or the other way around. I think this girl only is only for me to have sex with her. So she is categorized and known. Now they have the fantasy of knowing, but actually uh, they are not really connecting to anyone and they mm. are having a really uh, poor relation with everybody because oh. they can't uh, deal with the person, the whole person. So you know what, speak, that makes a lot a, of sense. I, I, of I want you all to see something that's on the screen right here, right? So this is the guy who we showed in that video. His name is Floyd. And Austin put up a post that says, Floyd did it. Can you do it too? And he's like, Floyd did it. Can you do it too? And so Floyd, who is a guy who's very corny in the United States, he came over to Brazil. He met a very cute young lady. And you see there's a bed behind him. Right? And so this is, this is, let me go back the other way. And you see there's a bed behind him. So he has now found himself a cute girl. And one of the things that you said about how they used to say that white women were so submissive, we have under a minute, you all have to click to come back in. Okay. So, so what are your thoughts on this? So he's, he's showing the guys that, so now he's organizing to figure out a way to get more men to come over figuring out ways to get men to come and meet these cute girls. Is that a form of pimping? Oh my goodness, we done. Is, is that a form? That, that's a question right there. That's a question right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to read the apples because I want to get some of your thoughts on what it is that we've been seeing, right? Mm, mm, mm. Um, are you all enjoying the show so far? Let me know how you're liking it. Let me know how I'm downloading another picture that I wanted to add to the group because there's another, there's another, um, there's another thing that I want you all to see, right? There's another thing I want you all to see because he is he's acting as if he's going to be a concierge for these men to come over. Let me get um, us back up and running behind the scenes. Yeah, so he has so he has now created a concierge service where he's bringing men over where he can. He's bringing men over where they can now be able to find themselves a cutie, you know, like. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. So there's another thing that I wanted you all to see. So this is so this is um, an image on the screen, right? This is an image that was created, as you see, and, and shout out to the real King Brujo who sent this over to me. I had no idea about this, but in this photo, he says, stop, help other brothers have success overseas by liking and following the Facebook page now. And they showcase the picture of this guy who would be considered corny in the United States with a cute girl. And one of the things that you were saying is true because you know how they used to say, oh, um, white women are more submissive, et cetera. So then what ended up happening is they burned their bridges in the United States with white women. They started saying, oh, you know, mixed women are better. And then they burned their bridges there. And then now they've gone over to different countries. 
countries, but they're not going to countries that have people with the Negroid phenotype. They're going to countries and targeting women who look mixed, who are mestizo, mezclado, you know, mixed, and say and promoting them as better. What are your thoughts on that? Okay. Eu queria muito, inclusive, colocar um ponto que me chocou, né? Pensando nessa história toda de como eles, nessa busca deles por essas mulheres submissas, porque no fundo eles estão procurando isso, o Alston faz umas entrevistas que são mais longas no canal dele. E uma delas me chocou muito, porque ele pergunta tanto para a moça qual é o tamanho de pênis que ela gosta, quanto ele pergunta se ela sabe cozinhar e se ela quer ter filhos. E, e, e isso, para mim, é surreal, porque diz muito sobre a forma como eles enxergam essas mulheres. Elas estão praticamente na cabeça deles a serviço deles. E, e, e é isso que eles estão buscando. E é extremamente surreal isso em 2023. Ok, ok. Translate, translate, Tulio. Translate. É, muito Well, uh, something that she saw that uh, was shocking her, like she was shocked, is in one interview that Aston made, he asked to the girls, what, what, what the size of a penis does she like? And if, if she, she, she knows how to cook, she knows how to take care of a house, and sons, as, uh, sons make sons, etc. And for Stephanie, that's something absurd because the only thing that they, the, the, the only way then they see the woman, they, 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 they look at the woman is this in the, is in the uh, um, uh, subservience place. You know, the woman is to have sex, to cook, to make babies and take, actually take care of the babies. And that's that, you know, like, so this is a, this is a really narrow minded misogynist perspective that shows in his interviews how he talked with the women. Mm, Helena? Yeah, uh, I think that that is, is it. Uh, they don't really like women because they don't want to relate with them. They uh, uh, make many, uh, much efforts to not really connect with us women. So, I think in the end, this kind of guys, they don't really like women. They don't, don't like the people we are. They don't want to really know us. They put these strategies uh, in front of us. And they don't see us. Tanto, Helena, que eu acho que essas fotos que eles publicam é quase como se eles estivessem publicando um troféu. Do tipo, olha só o que eu tenho. É tipo, é quase como... Se... Tipo, a gente vai comprar uma bolsa e fala, olha que bolsa linda eu tenho. Eles fazem isso com essas fotos dessas mulheres e promovem essa ideia ridícula e absurda. E ostentam, né? Como um produto, né? Para mostrar uma espécie de... Enfim, de... Translation, uma... translation. Mas um homem que reafirma a minha masculinidade. The way that they show the women in the pictures is like trophies. You know, like, oh, you see what I got? You see, you know, I, what I have? And this is the perspective. This is objectification, as uh, we said, and it's, uh, well, it's terrible. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But objectification no... is not illegal. It's, that's mm -hmm. not illegal. There are a lot of men who feel that way, especially in traditional societies. But I'm going to show a screenshot here on the screen. Um, if you can see what, what it says here. It says, women in Brazil are for sale. That's just facts. Um, here, let me get the whole thing shown so that you can see, okay? So it says here, you, you see it says, most women in Brazil are for sale. It's just facts. Prostitution is a way of life down there. Same as in the DR or in Colombia. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Is it a way of life? Esse homem é horrível. Esse homem, <risos> ele, esse homem ele, ele me mandou várias mensagens e, e, e ele disse para mim que ele viaja para vários países e ele citou vários países. Então, ele é um turista sexual profissional. Ele vive disso, sabe? Ele, ele começou a me confrontar 
para defender o Alston, e ele estava dizendo que ele vai para qualquer país e ele consegue mulher em qualquer país, porque todas elas estão à venda. This, yeah. the, guy, the guy that made this post sent several messages to Stephanie saying that he traveled for a lot of places, a lot of countries, and he, he, he affirming this, like the women are prostitutes, they are for sale in these places, I will keep doing this, the Passaport Bros will do this, you won't stop us. It's so, I, I, uh, I, I, I mean, you seem, you, seem, you seem frustrated, Tulio. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because as, uh, as uh, someone that um, tried to make a, a public, well, I, I didn't do this in the States, I did more in Brazil, but uh, tried to do a public discussion about black masculinities and the things that, but the, the, the real thing about black masculinities is there are a lot of behaviors that we black men automatically, culturally do And this is not about us. This is more against us. Because when we black men are working on misogyny, are working in sexism, are working in this project about to be or try to be the power white man, we are usually killing our sisters or people in our, our, our community We are degrading our relations in society. We are breaking up the ties or the possibilities to understand and to connect with other sufferings. For example, the suffering of the women, the suffering of the LGBT people, the suffering about people in other countries, etc. So we are in this kind of trap that makes us believe that through this project, this um, uh, hegemonic masculinity project, we can be better men. And that's frustrating to see men doing like this, um, passport bros, and et cetera, and et cetera. And there's yeah. this complication. Well, let me ask you this question. So you're talking about black men, but we also talked about white men. White men have been doing this since before the colonial era. As a matter of fact, this is how Brazil got so mixed, right? Brazil yeah. got mixed because of the because of the Portuguese that colonized and brought so many people over from Africa and then capital R worded them. And then now there's a lot of people who are mesclado, mestizo in Brazil. So white men have been doing this. They continue to do it. What's different about the passport bros that has that has you you all up in arms? Yeah, that's the thing for me because this is a colonial project. So we can't talk about we can't talk about liberation and transformation or even revolution if you are doing the same steps. If you are, uh, if we are uh, uh, connected with a project that uh, is responsible for death, for murder, for rape, for violence, especially against the black women, because that's as we told uh, Tonya. It's colonial project and how the colonia was made was made about violence and rape and domination right. and oppression. Right. So question for you, Stephanie, have you reported any white men to the authorities or is Austin the first person that you reported and why? Quando eles disseram para mim que eu estava só denunciando ele por ser um, um homem negro. É óbvio que eu estou denunciando a conduta de homens negros que eu considero errada. Porque eu sou uma mulher negra e a conduta dele afeta a mim e a todas as outras mulheres negras que são o meu foco e a minha defesa. É... Ela falou assim, ela ouve algumas coisas, pessoas como, oh, você está apenas falando sobre black men, você não está falando sobre white men, etc. Eu disse, sim. Yeah. For sure, I will talk about this when I see a black man doing something that is wrong, that is damage for the people, for the culture, for the, the, the woman. So uh, there's no problem on this. Like if a black man is doing something that is harmful for us as people, as community, she will talk about this. 
porque isso afeta nós, mulheres negras, principalmente. Right, but the Mas, question was about say... white men. The question was about white right. men who have been doing this for hundreds of years. The question was, have you ever reported a white man to Exato, the authorities? Isso que eu disse. Yes, eu já, eu já denunciei vários homens brancos no Brasil, tipo, yeah. muitos. Eu sou tipo muito criticada por vários homens brancos. Eu inclusive denunciei uma peça de teatro feita por homens brancos que eu fui massacrada por um tempo por esses homens brancos. Então, eu estou muito acostumada a denunciar homens brancos. A gente faz isso quase toda semana, assim. Então, she denounced several white men in terms of sexism, uh, racism. For example, there was a, a big uh, theater play that they made they made blackface in this in this uh, theater play, and mm. she denounced it, and she she. With this denounce, she stopped the, the play in a oh. huge... Yeah. Very nice, very nice. People, people, Stephanie is a such thing, uh, important, giant, her. Uh, you all should know her. Like, Não, e, e inclusive nessa época que eu denunciei serious. esses homens brancos, eu até fui, ganhei uma medalha por causa disso, porque foi algo muito importante. E eu denunciei os homens brancos da minha faculdade, quando eu fiz arquitetura, que me tratavam de forma racista. She denounced this theater play. She denounced, for example, the, the colleagues in the, the college when she was, she, she took a, a architecture because the way that they treated her. She, she, there... Tem um documentário na HBO. Oh, yeah, there's a, actually two docu documentaries talking about this, talking okay. about okay. how she made this in, in terms of In terms of sex tourism, have you sent any white men to the authorities? Não, porque inclusive eu achei isso uma coisa que eu li um homem negro americano falando isso e, e é real. Eu nunca vi homens brancos até então, pelo menos, tornando o turismo sexual deles algo público. Aparentemente os homens negros tornam o turismo sexual deles público porque eles querem reafirmar a masculinidade e e o poder deles. Então eles agem até de uma forma extremamente surreal e burra. Uh, no, in this in this thing, because the thing is, you in Eu Brazil. Li um homem negro. Yeah, she 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 uh, she read a, a black guy saying, "Oh, you denounce the black guys, but you never you didn't you don't talk anything about the the white guys." The thing is, you rarely will see a white guy bragging about sex tourism, because <laughs> that's the thing, you know, the people commit crimes or things that should be legal, uh, hiding and not bragging themselves and not showing them like, oh, oh. oh, how great I am because I am with these girls, $10 or bring here. Take so because of their girls. videos, because they, they were so public about it, they, exactly. and because this video went viral. Okay, I'm gonna put another another image on the screen here. This is from Austin himself. He says, yes, get your passports as in deal with women that understand men. So he's talking about getting your passport so that you can deal with women that understand men. Well, um, what is the problem with this sentiment besides just being sexist? Do seus pega esses passaportes e é essa, aquela não? menina do vídeo, né? Eu acho que é, não sei. Não... É o vídeo que você mostrou. É isso, a pergunta para você. The last video or there's another one? Because we, we didn't see here. This is this is the screenshot. It says ah, from ah, Austin, sim. where he's saying, get your passports. But you know what? So they're saying women understand men. I'll put up this right here on the screen. Why American men should date Brazilian women? That's a video. Are Brazilian women just easy? That's another video that he put up. Are Brazilian women just easy? É, é, é tão surreal, porque no fundo, quando eles dizem que as mulheres brasileiras entendem os homens é, americanos, no fundo, muitas delas sequer conseguem se comunicar. É engraçado. Eu vou dar esse exemplo. Acho que você Acho tem que... Deixa, tra... é, deixa eu falar assim. It, it's something surreal, the idea that when they say, the way they, when they say the, uh, that the Brazilian women understand better, uh, better the, the, the American men, 
Uh, é, é impossível. É, é engraçado porque muitas não conseguem se comunicar e um desses amigos do Alston fez um vídeo até ensinando como você pegar uma mulher usando o Google Tradutor. Ou seja, eles não querem se comunicar, e aí é o que a Helena disse, eles não querem se conectar com essas mulheres. Quando eles dizem que entendem, é exatamente porque elas não conseguem, às vezes, nem dizer para eles o que elas estão sentindo e como elas estão se sentindo. É, é. It, it, it's uh, uh, weird, because most of this, this girls, they, they cannot even speak English. So there's some videos that the guy are trying to, to, to teach her or even to talk with her from Google, Google Translator. Like, you know, say something and the, the machine says. And the idea that the, these women understand better, you know, without communication. So that, that's the thing as, as Stephanie oh, said. Oh, you know what? That's a really good point. How can you say that a woman understands you better and you don't speak the language? What is it that she's understanding? But this Because is, so they... that's, a, that's a good question. You know what, Helena, I want to talk to you about some of the, the psychology of it. But we have to check the cash apps because there have been so many people who have been sending in questions. So there are 2,000 people on YouTube. There are 100 people on Facebook. Let me see how many on Twitch. There's two people on Twitch. We also have people watching from Twitter. So everybody's watching from all over the globe. And so we're going to check the apples right now. If you hear that, oh, it's very low. Let me pull that up. Let me pull that up. There we go. <laughs> wow, you know what? The conversation was so good. It was so difficult to pull away. But I'm, we're going to read, we're going to read all of these apples now. So, so Tashia sends 1111 and she has sent that for me to go to Brazil. She wants me to go over there, right? Anasa sends $10 and says, thank you for your content. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Let me get a little music on in the background for us right here. I appreciate you all. Um, I hope there's some questions here for the panel so that we can ask some of those. Amanda sends $5 and says, women everywhere are waking up to the PP boys. Yes. Elizabeth sends a dollar and says, maybe us women should look for men outside the U.S., But is that the solution? Because is that also objectification where you're not looking at a person as a person, as an individual, but as a commodity? Audra sends $20 and says, great content. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Latricia sends $2 and says, you're fire. Thank you. Nancy Motoro says, first cash app ever. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Brandy sends 333 and says, thanks to you, goddess, for all that you do, heart and enlightenment. Thank you. I appreciate that. Raven sends $10 and says, your energy is good and you look beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Danny sends $5 and says, thank you for this video. I appreciate that. And there is here, here. Yeah, you hear that? You hear that? <laughs> whoop, whoop. Eh. <laughs> you all got me acting crazy in front of my guests. <laughs> But you know, I gotta. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> <laughs> We have a super apple that has come in <laughs> from Falila. Falila sends $100 through and she says going above and beyond to educate us with evidence. Thank you, Falila. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Claudina sends $5 and says you are beautiful as always. I appreciate that. Amira sends $5 and says, thank you for all your content. Nice work tonight. Thank you. Let me refresh and give some hearts right there. Okay. All right. Geneva sends 20 and says, thanks for all that you're doing. Rashida sends five and says, thank you so much for the interview. Wonderful. Keisha sends 1010 and says, sounds like predatory behavior. Definitely is predatory. 
JJ sends $5 and says, good job tonight, Tanya. Thank you. Sarah sends $4. Thank you. Middleton sends 15 and says, thank you for this live. Thank you for showing up. Thank you to all of the people. African Beauty sends $3 and says, kudos. Tiffany sends $15 and says, do men love us? All your content being a Leo. You know what? That is a good question. I'm going to ask that question to the panel because I really want to know. Ronnell sends 333 and says, rested and on point with receipts. Get to Brazil and to see for yourself. <laughs> thank you so much, Ronnell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Shimia sends five dollars and says, "Love this live." Crowned Coaching sends ten ten and says, "My first apple." Well, we got two in. You know, I do the dance on the third one, the third first apple. So we shall we shall see if you all are gonna have me bust a wine in front of our guests. But you know. Brazilians love to samba. I think that's what it's called when the feet are moving real fast. I think that's what it's called. I, you know what? When I met you, Helena, in um in Buenos Aires, you tried to teach me, but I did not get it. I couldn't get it. The 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 I, the samba is when the feet are moving like this, right? On the I, you tried to teach me, but I couldn't get it. I couldn't get. I my body, it doesn't. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll learn one day. Maybe if I come over, yeah. maybe. <laughs> Let's get another try. Another try. <laughs> well, you know what? Listen, I want to talk to, I want to talk to you, um, all of you on the panel. The question is, and you know what? You all, please submit questions to the, to the guest through the Apple so that you can make sure that I see it. <clears throat> Do men love women? In general. Do men love women? Why are you checking out of the conversation, Tulio? What is the matter? Come back in. Come back in. Let us wrap our arms. Let's send some hugs to Tulio. Tulio, do men love women? Wow, that's a, a huge and difficult question. Um, uh, well, in terms of the hegemonic project, masculinity project, no. Definitely not, because there's... Hold on, hold there's... on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We just need that to simmer over us for a moment, because I did an entire broadcast where I came to this realization. So you heard him. He said no, and now he's going to elaborate. Helena, think of your answer, because I'm going to ask you next, too. So talk to us. Yeah, uh, the thing is, the... the... The, 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 the hegemonic masculinity project is based in three things. Uh, first of all, the idea that we have uh, binary stuff, you know, we have men, women. It's always two poles, you know, like one another, one another. So first thing, this. Second thing, these two sides, this binary, they are hier hierarchical, instituted so you know we don't just have one and other but one must be superior and another must be inferior to each other and the third thing is this connection this relation of hierarchical with power of oppression can be uh, um, made by violence so mm. the superior can exercise violence through the inferior so talk about this, I'm sure that most of your audience can think, oh, this is about racial stuff. No, this is about oppression in a colonial world. So this base of the project is connected to the project to the masculinities, but also is connected to the racial uh, uh, oppression, the racial uh, uh, issues, and also connected with the body stuff, for example, our relation with people that we say they are healthy against people with dis uh, uh, disabilities. Right, but do men love women? You said no, because one is on top, one is on the bottom, and sometimes it's made that way via violence. Exactly. So this relation is not about love. It's not about connection. It's about power. It's about to exercise exerc 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 
power through the relations. You but know? You well, are. you know what? I had so so oh, then sure. Helena. Yeah, I'm talking about the you, I'm so yes, sorry. we're talking about yeah, society wide. Helena, as a as a psychologist yeah. and understanding the pathological thinking, um neur neuroticism, narcissism, personality disorder, do men love women? I would uh, respond that with uh, in individually, there are men that love women, but these men are very uh, emotionally mature. So yeah, they have this opportunity. Uh, but unfortunately, as Tulio was saying, uh, our system, our uh, culture, and many things else uh, are not potentializing this uh, capability of love. They are potentializing another thing that is this uh, power game. And mm. maybe they are so interested about putting their efforts in maintaining this level of power that they don't even have uh, the time. They don't learn wow. about love. So you know what, that is, that's a great point. So then my question is, especially for you all who are scholars, Stephanie, who is a prominent feminist, and, um, and Tulio, who is a sociologist who is studying black male, um, psych black male masculinity at the PhD level, right? PhD candidate. Um, if men loved women, what would be different? How would things be different? How would that show up? How would, how would men show up in society? That's a good question. I'd, I'd like to well, say... Well, you know what? J jump uh, in there while he's thinking. Go ahead. Jump. Let us know, Helena. Yeah. Uh, first, they would listen. <laughs> they would listen and know about us. I think that's the, the first point. I think if uh, they love... Uh, when a man really uh, loves the, uh, the woman, the person that she is, he wants to know her. So he wants to know about uh, all of her. Mm. Not uh, not just about how she can serve him. Yeah. Mm. I think it's a factor of humanization. And humanization is not a product of perfection. We women are not humans. We are not an and we are not perfect. We are wrong, we are right. O olhar humano sobre as mulheres, ele precisa ser construído para que haja amor em relação a nós. Perfeito. Uau. Uh, it's a matter of humanization. It's about to treat and consider women as human. And as, as humans, uh, they are not perfect, you know? So to construct the, the, the connection with the human, woman, human, it's to understand that they are not perfect, they are people, they do things, they want things, and uh, the only way that love can be brought, can be built, is to, with the, through the humanization of the women. Ah, so I think I understand a little bit better. So part of the issue with the passport movement is that it's not looking at people as an individual, but looking at them as a monolith and inviting people over and then setting the expectation. But question about that, are there certain things across the board that are culturally present in certain regions? Is there something about Brazil and the culture in Brazil that creates a certain type of woman who behaves a certain type of way? Helena, I want you to answer that first. Okay, well, I think it's not about the Brazilian culture. Uh, it's about the interpretation of it from the perspective of the oppressor. Of the, mm. Yeah, it's just that. It's not about, it's not, not, there is nothing in our culture or in our ways that uh, says that we can be seen as products or objects. There is nothing wrong about our culture. Our culture is really beautiful. I am very proud of being a Brazilian and listening to what Stephanie uh, was saying about uh, how feminism is growing in Brazil and how even uh, the most vulnerable woman, uh, she can 
she is already at, uh, instrumentalized uh, to question some things. So I think there's nothing wrong. Uh, I think uh, that's the oppressor way of seeing uh, us. E, e é importante falar que essa visão que existe sobre nós também é fruto do racismo que nós sofremos por sermos um país de maioria negra, com uma história majoritariamente negra, com uma cultura extremamente ligada à cultura negra. Então, esse olhar de objetificação, de estereótipo e até de repulsa e, 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 e ao mesmo tempo, esse desejo, essa coisa toda insana que se cria também está muito ligado às nossas origens negras. Perfeito. Perfeito. Uh, and this, this view... <laughs> Ele me ama. Yeah. <laughs> There's a man who, who loves a woman. <laughs> Do men love a woman? Uh, we know that Tulio does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, this view is also connected with, with racism. The idea that we, Brazil, uh, we are a country made by Black people or mixed with Black and a lot of Black culture, about a lot of African uh, uh, descended Black culture. And this is also something that uh, is connected with racism, even though we are talking about Black men doing this. But we must remember, we are talking about North American Black men. So the relation between cultures and these are, uh, Stephanie did say, I'm going, uh, I'm adding this. Uh, we are talking about imperialism. We are talking mm -hmm. about the idea that people in uh, some country can make relations, can bring the things, can do whatever they want, because they have this idea that the things over there is like this, even though, with, even though if they were never there. So imperialism is the friend or brother of racism, with the cousin, with the misogyny. And we are talking about this project of power that is colonial which makes victims inside the United States. That's why we talk a lot about racial problems in the United States. Yeah, but, but I don't also... see how that relates to what we're talking about, sex, tourism, passport oh. boys. How does it relate? Wow, that's all related because the thing is, the, I, the, the way that these men, that is kind of, uh, how could I say? The way that these men, that they cannot uh, exercise the power as men inside the American society, they will try to exercise this, this power in other places. And they do this in places that they understand that is inferior, that is people that, you know, those doesn't re e essa respect. Está com o nosso contexto por conta de raça. And the inferiority of our context is connected with race. So it's all connected. So this man from the place, that they are already subject, uh, subject, uh, yeah. subject, because they are black in a racist society, but they want to be recognized as a man and, and people that deserve the respect. So they, bring, they, they follow a project that they think that is, is the better way to be recognized. So they do this in other places, places that they also think that is inferiorized. Countries like Brazil, okay. Colombia, you know. So, so I have a, I have a question for you about um, them leaving women pregnant. Um, do Brazilian men leave women pregnant? Ah, se homens brasileiros também deixam mulheres. Yeah. Isso é sure. muito importante a gente falar, Tônia, que a gente estava falando sobre as leis brasileiras. Sim, homens brasileiros também abandonam mulheres, mas a gente tem leis que é tudo isso que eu fico toda hora repetindo. Tanto que a gente tem uma das leis mais significativas no sentido de violência doméstica, mas também de paternidade. A gente, no Brasil, define que se um homem tem um filho, ele tem que pagar uma pensão que corresponde a 30% do salário dele. É muita Isso. coisa. Uh, yeah, this happens in Brazil, but that's the thing. Uh, she's uh, uh, appointing this all the time. We have laws about this. For example, if a man impregnates a woman and leaves her, she can go to the, uh, get to the, the act, the law, and he is uh, ob uh, ob uh, obligated to pay 30% of his wage to her, 
because there's a law, you know, protecting this woman, you know, saying that okay. you cannot go around pregnating everyone, you know? Inclusive, no Brasil, essa lei é tão levada a sério que é um dos motivos que leva a homem, homens a serem presos. Oh, yeah, you can get arrested about uh, this. Porque so, so my, my question would be, why would a woman have unprotected intercourse with a man who's just visiting? Por que, que elas não sofrem? É, por que, que mulheres vão ter sexo é, desprotegido com pessoas que só estão visitando? Porque tem todo Aí tem a discussão da lábia, né? Da... Porque tem toda um, um, uma sedução também, né? Eu vi um print de um dos homens dizendo que, ah, na primeira vez foi com camisinha, na segunda ela já não, não usou. Então, eu acho que tem todo um... Não é simplesmente eu vou para aquele país e saio pegando mulheres. Eu também crio uma situação de construção afetiva em que essas mulheres acabam acreditando em tudo que esses homens dizem. We are talking this. I'm not saying what she say, but I will say it anyway. But the thing is, we are talking about predatory behavior. Yes. And when we are talking about predatory, we are talking about people that can uh, attract, deceive, use, abuse, and go. So this is important to understand. You know, I understand your question. But it's not the matter about the women, the fact that they are doing the non-protected sex. It's how the situation is built for this. And Stephanie was telling about this, for example. She heard about the girls that, oh, the first time it was with a condom, but after that, he said that he loves, blah, 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 blah. So, so there's all this predatory culture, the way, the behavior, the way that they, they, they build, that is connected with this, this the, the sex tourism. And this is the thing that we, 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 we uh, 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 should you know, e, talk e about. Só para finalizar, eu acho que eles nem sabem que a gente tem uma lei que faz com que homens, inclusive homens famosos brasileiros, sejam presos porque não pagam pensão. É tão irresponsável que eles sempre acham que a nossa, as nossas leis não, não, ati, não os atingem, porque eles nos veem como um país de segunda classe. Yeah. yeah. And we have laws here, like bans can be arrested here if they don't pay the, the pension. Yes, the child support. The child okay. support. Okay, um, so uh, another one of my questions, so what... Quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read what sex tourism is defined as. Sex tourism mm -hmm. refers to the practice of traveling to foreign countries, often on a different continent, with the intention of engaging in sexual activity or relationships in exchange for money or lifestyle support. This practice predominantly operates in countries where sex work is legal, but... There are countries where laws prohibit sex work. And so that is, that's what it's defined as, traveling for the purpose of sex. Sex tourism is illegal or legal in Brazil? Sex, é, turismo sexual não yeah. é ilegal. It's não combatido. É, ele, mas ele é combatido pelas autoridades. Yeah, yeah, it's not illegal, but it's... Uh... There are several, as we saw, we said, we said like some minutes ago, there's several law acts that try to avoid the sex tourism, the sex tourism, because that's the thing, you know, like it's really difficult. You get someone, you know, uh, to get caught in, 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 you know, oh, oh, you are doing sex tourism. No, I'm traveling. I'm exploding the places, I'm knowing new people. So there's a lot of other things that you do, other acts, other laws that you do to avoid the sex tourism because to talk about it, you know, it's... Oh my goodness. I was not prepared for that. Oh my goodness, we have to, it just, oh my goodness, I did not check to see. Oh my goodness, so we, we're gonna have to try that again. Oh my goodness. Wow, that just ended right in the middle of that. I was, I wasn't, I was thinking that we were going to, I was thinking that we were going to sum everything up, but it seems like, like there's so much more to discuss. I had no idea. I had no idea, no idea, no idea. So my question, my question, because there's still a lot of people who are saying a lot of different things, right, in the, in the comments area. You know, but as a matter of fact, this can be a perfect opportunity 
to um to get the apples, but it looks like they my guests have come back in. My goodness, that cl- clicked off at the most inopportune time. My goodness, <laughs> wow! Because right. you were you were on a roll, um, and so you were talking about there's there there are conditions that exist that are parallel that people can get yeah. booked on. So I appreciate that. Um, I have another question for you. Um, what's the population of Brazil? 210 million. 210 million. What is the HIV AIDS situation like in Brazil? Uh, actually, we won, we are one of the most referenced in the world uh, against the HIV. We have a, a public a health public uh, um, program since 90s that treats people for free and also uh, develop the, the discussion as I we told like several minutes ago why we are talk, why do we talk a lot about sexuality in Brazil why is important to talk Condom. about this to use condoms to take care etc to protect etc because the campaign against STDs and also HIVs is huge since the 90s in Brazil and this is something really important because this is connected also with the sex tourism most of the campaigns they happen in periods that we have more people traveling to brazil especially carnival which is now in like in one month because we know the government know the society know the enterprises know that for decades they cons- they built an image of brazil that brazil is this land of uh, uh, samba, Beaches. happiness, beach, but they built this idea for the white people in Europe, in the States, in other mm. places. So you see the, the layers of what, what we are dealing from. It's not that the Passaport Bros invented the sex tourism, etc. No, it's not about this. We are talking about layers of history of oppression, of the idea of this subjugation the, that we can go in Brazil and find the woman, the mulata, etc. It's also, uh, uh, I was talking about the, the health stuff. So yeah, we discuss about this because we have programs that take care of this and, and avoid the split of HIV. Inclusive, in hoje saiu uma notícia no jornal daqui que o ministro da dos direitos humanos já conversou com o presidente da Agência Nacional de Turismo para eles criarem uma campanha voltada para o carnaval, porque a gente sabe que o carnaval é uma época em que acontecem muitos casos de assédio. Então, a gente quer informar as pessoas o que, que é considerado assédio no Brasil. Acho que um dos pontos importantes... Você não precisa traduzir essa parte mas, que eu falei antes, mas um dos pontos importantes que eu entendi é os homens de outras culturas que estão vindo para o Brasil, eles não têm noção do que são as leis brasileiras. E eles, não, e eles acham que as leis brasileiras não podem atingir eles, porque são leis de um país de segunda classe. Perfeito. Isso você traduz. Tá, perfeito. Ótima colocação. Uhum. The, uh, the, 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 these men that are coming here, uh, especially like passport bros, for sex, etc., they don't know the laws in Brazil. And they don't believe that in, here in Brazil we have laws that protect the women, protect the society, and they think that even though if there's a law, they are, you know, uh, uh, they can affect them. So this is an important thing, you know. Uh, we have an expression here is like, uh, aqui não é bagunça, you know. <laughs> here is not a mess. You cannot come here and do whatever you want, you know. We are really serious about that. And that's why Stephanie is talking about this because it's a serious, it's a serious issue. It's not something that oh, it happens. E a gente tem muitas campanhas sobre assédio, por exemplo, no carnaval. And we have a lot of campaigns, especially close to, uh, near to the carnival, talking about the the the. Nossa, esqueci como fala assédio. Arrestments. 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 Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Arrestments uh, that happens, especially in carnival uh, uh, moments. What do you mean? What type of harassments are we talking about? Because people are like, for example, uh, uh, um, you know, like in New Orleans, Mardi Gras, like people on streets having fun, music, you who yeah. dancing at mm-hmm. that, oh, Halloween. 
or even Halloween. For, I think Halloween may be something <laughs> the nights in Halloween. So yeah, people on streets dancing, you know. So harassments are usually the guys, you know, like grab the girls, trying to force uh, the keys, trying to grab the some parts. Mas know? também é considerado assédio falas. Ah, things that they you say to them. E know? no Brasil, por exemplo, fala para Tônia que todas as mensagens que esses homens estão me mandando mm. são consideradas assédio virtual. A gente também tem uma lei para isso. Oh yeah. <laughs> We have uh, I, I'm, I'm laughing because she's amazing. Uh, the thing is, also in Brazil we have a, a virtual harassment. It's the, uh, the this when you harass someone speaking and you can uh, do this online and this is crime in Brazil. So all you passport bros that are sending messages to her, you are committing illegal stuff here, you know, because you can take all this, take to the prosecutor and, you know, things can be done because virtual harassment is also illegal and we have laws for this. Inclusive, chamar Not mulheres true. de gostosa, de... Isso é considerado assim. Cat calls. Fazer yeah. comentários sexuais. Cat calling on the street is against the law, like, hey, mamita. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you, that's illegal. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I um I yeah. saw I saw a video. Well, I've seen videos of carnival in Rio. And from mm -hmm. what it is that I saw, there were people in the parade having penetrative intercourse. This is what I saw. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I saw it in a video. They had on the wonderful outfits and people were dancing. And then they were there and then you turn the, the camera and you look down and they're in there like, mm, mm, right in the middle of the street. I saw this. So you're saying you've been to Carnival, you've never seen this? No. No, <laughs> not this scene. No, Carnival is so much more than that, no. I, I never see. I love carnival. I I always uh, have lots of fun in carnival. The carnival is arriving, and I am excited about it. But I ne I never saw a scene like that. Acho que Leda, a gente tem que contar que o carnaval no Brasil ele tem muito a ver com a cultura negra, Tônia, porque o carnaval chegou aqui na elite em festas fechadas de clube. E então os negros passaram a comemorar na rua. Então, esse carnaval de rua, que às vezes as pessoas associam a coisas horríveis, ele é um carnaval muito marcado, de novo, pela questão racial. Eu acho que eu li alguns homens dizendo coisas absurdas do tipo, ah, vocês transam na rua no carnaval. E eles ignoram que essa cultura do carnaval de rua é uma cultura, para gente no Brasil, muito ligada à questão de classe e de raça. <risos> eu tô olhando os comentários é. também. Uh, uh, there's something important about this. This carnival is connected with the black culture. So also we have this uh, racial idea, racial um, perspective that the people, you know, oh, with the blacks is all mess, is all, you know, fun. You don't have any kind of responsibility, any kind of engagement. And this is the thing that she said. But also I want to add one thing which is important and makes connection, connection with the imperialism. Uh, uh, be careful with the images. Like I love when Patricio Collins talk about images of control, because that's the thing, you know, the way that the videos, the pictures made in a carnival in Brazil travel around is connected with this image of control. This idea that, oh, it's all that you want. It's all that you need to see about this place. They don't show people working. They don't show. They don't show how beautiful is the spectacle of the carnival. The people dancing, the the costumes, black people, the black people the doing poor black people. The, poor, black, the poor black people working, doing things, creating. There's a lot of creativity in the carnival. It's 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 beautiful. It, it's just beautiful. So the thing is, these images, like people having intercourse <laughs> in the middle of the carnival, this is how the image controls works. You know, it's how it, it's everybody sees this. Oh, carnival is this. So if I go to the carnival, maybe I can have the intercourse, or I have to take care because someone can you know get into me. So it's important to understand this because these okay. images about Brazil are made for 
Okay, I so love- you know, I have I have not been. This is why I'm asking you because I want to know whether or not these stereotypes are true. Because when we look at the HIV rate, right? There's a lot of unprotected intercourse. I was looking at the trends and it is not going down. There's almost a million people living with HIV in a 220 million population and it just continues to go up each year. So I'm 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 wondering what is true. Is there the conservatism or is it just free intercourse everywhere? Because we're talking about prostitution and not and not advertising prostitution, but a prostitute is somebody who charges. If you're not even charging, that's not prostitution. That's something else. That is something else. Because charging is a is is a profession. Not charging is something else. Uh, uh, I, Go ahead, I am, Helena. I am thinking about what you are saying. And I am remembering that the, in the beginning, we, we, you were talking about, maybe we talk about narcissistic personalities. Mm-hmm. Well, well, we are not diagnosed, diagnosing any, anyone, but uh, Stephanie talked about the predatory uh, behavior. And it's like, uh, it's like uh, the, these guys, they think they can come here and have the, the, the predatory behavior that they can't have in their country. And uh, it's, it is about them. I am concerned about the way uh, I understand that we have this, like uh, there is an image, as I can see, of Brazil being a place to have sex. Oh, we are all around having lots and lots of sex, but I don't, I don't, uh, I don't see how can it connect to the the predatory behavior issue because uh, it's not because uh, someone has uh, their choice or sexual freedom that it is giving permission sure. to people from other country come come here with this predatory behavior. Uh, maybe we have more sex, I don't know, I don't have the numbers, but even if we had, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it it's, uh, has nothing to do uh, with this predatory behavior. Exactly. So, and I think it's still about the stereotype that you were talking about, Tonya. I think that in fact, é, é muito o contrário, porque, na verdade, como a gente tem uma cultura em que até o governo distribui condoms, é, a gente, inclusive, tem talvez as melhores camisinhas do mundo, porque é um hábito muito comum no Brasil você ter camisinhas. Eu lembro da minha mãe mesmo. Mas a... acho, que não, acho, que não, acho que eles não vão conseguir entender isso. Mas acho que é coisa do público, do, do, do é. como o governo ele tem um, um cuidado público, uhum. porque a gente entende que é uma questão de saúde pública uhum. e como talvez eles talvez tragam uma cultura de que quebre um pouco isso, talvez. É, mas eu acho que aí tem uma, uma barreira... We are discussing something important, <laughs> sorry, uh, but uh, no, yeah, I, no, I would say, uh, Stephanie said something important, like they, here we have uh, the government, you know, like discussing about this, giving condom to the people in terms of, you know, protect yourselves, campaigns. This doesn't uh, do or make that everybody is protecting themselves. But the thing is, your question, I think it's not or, 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 you know, that's Brazil. Brazil has a conservative, uh, there's a a huge conservative people. Brazil also has parties. Brazil also has people have sexy or protected or not. You know, Brazil is a really multicultural, remixed, complex country with 200,000 people and the size of a continent, like it fits like 15, 20 countries from the Europe inside, uh, inside our territory. So Brazil is really complex, you know? So it's not or and or. But I, mm. I, I, I get like, we have this too. We have this uh. 
things, and, and Elena said this, we are all, we, we, we already have our problems on this. <laughs> Não Mas eu, eu acho que tem um ponto que a Helena falou que esses homens eles são predador, preda, predadores é. e eles, eles também conseguem identificar a fragilidade de mulheres. Uhum. Eu acho que a gente também tem que entender que o homem predador ele também não ataca qualquer tipo de mulher. Então, ele... E aí, quando eu estou dizendo, tipo, eu não estou dizendo que essas mulheres são fáceis, mas talvez essas mulheres sejam vulneráveis não só socialmente, mas também psicologicamente. Sim. Yeah. E yeah. and... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, can you translate? translate? No, no, please don't translate her. Then I comment. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought you would say. But the thing, uh, uh, Stephanie said that uh, we are talking about predatory behavior. And in terms of predatory behavior, uh, there's men that can understand fragility or at least the idea that someone is more fragile, you know, vulnerable. vulnerable. I think is a better word, vulnerable. So not socially vulnerable, but also psychologically and emotional vulnerable. They can connect with this. They can understand and, and do this. And it's uh, for me it's so it's so clear. Like yeah, I I am thinking about what Stephanie is saying. In maybe uh, uh, Antonia was commenting about our rates of uh, HIV contamination. And then uh, we talk about some people having unprotective sex. And we, we are also talking about women that are more vulnerable, vulnerable to these predators. Well, there's a link for that. And that's lack of sexual education. We have to have more. If we have uh, high levels of S, uh, SATs or uh, DSTs and we also have women that are more vulnerable to this kind of behavior yeah. that they are wrong, not them, not the, not the women, that the, if they are having sex or not, I don't think that's, that's the question. I think the, the problem is that they are more vulnerable as uh, the same way as uh, maybe they are more vulnerable to DSTs because because of the fact that we are a developing country. And okay, so just, 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 so just to clarify, DSTs are the sexually transmitted diseases. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, I think it's the same thing. I think uh, if we have this, and we have also women that are being caught in this predatory behavior, it's because, yeah, I, I think we have a problem. And it's a lack of sexual education because okay. maybe when we have more sexual education, we will de uh, degree decrease reduce the levels decrease. of mm -hmm. uh, reduce the the levels of this GST contaminations as well. Women will be more instrumentalized, more uh, protect. Uh, they will have will be more protected against these predators. Yeah. Okay, so my question, my question is, what is it that makes Brazilian women so vulnerable? Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> we, we are heading we a sexist country. E porque yeah. a gente também é um país de muitas mulheres negras. E as mulheres negras no Brasil, elas são preteridas. E elas são violadas pelo Estado e pela sociedade de diferentes formas. Então, essa vulnerabilidade que algumas meninas têm emocional também é fruto do racismo institucional. Estou uhum. uh... <risos> ficando cansado. Uh, most of the, the uh, vulnerability uh, of the women in Brazil is connected with a racial stuff. Well, that's the thing important. The biggest population in Brazil is black. The biggest population inside the black community is women. So the women, which is almost like one fourth of the, the population, 25% of the population, are in this worst uh, 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 situation of vulner vulnerability, which is a social vulnerability, economical vulnerability, and other things, health, take care, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> that's why. But also, this question, <laughs> Brazil is a country that is inside the peripheral capitalism. 
we are global south we are inside of something bigger and which is the global constitution of the relation of the country so the vulnerability is not just about the black woman in brazil but is that vulnerability as a as a country as a, as some problems and challenges that we have you know and the idea of these men that they can come here to get the girls is the idea that perpetuates this place perpetuates the idea the the stereotype the stereotypical idea that brazil is a place inferior that you can have you can go grab your girls over there mess up have fun and travel to another place that you can you know so this line of the how the things are connected that we are at least me trying to to, to put here you know the vulnerability has connection with historical problems that we have in brazil so Which are you started, saying that the darker skinned yeah. women are more vulnerable in Brazil? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. But even though the 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 even how we we do the racial discussion in Brazil, uh, also uh, something, for example, for example, we are talking more about the colorism uh, for like 10, 20 years from now, you know, mm -hmm. because when we say black in Brazil, in Portuguese, we say negro. We, uh, we are talking about the black, the people that are, are dark skin, but also we are talking about the people that have medium or kind of light skin. Use mestizos. This, yeah. Which is mestizos, but we call pardos. Because the idea of the miscegenation through the, the colonial story, you know, we have a huge black population that is not just dark skin people. We, we take the part, for example, we are uh, almost 60% of the population in Brazil, the blacks. But if you take just the dark skinned people, the pretos, it's like eight, almost 10%. Okay. You know, I, I can't, the, the number. So the thing is, even the racial stuff in Brazil is more, it's complicated, is more, uh, um, I'm, I'm losing the words, but you know, uh, it's more complicated that that's the yes. question. It's confusing. More complex. Uh -huh. Complex. Yeah, more, more complex. Okay, so are, so are you saying that the people who are also mixed are also vulnerable? So you're saying that there's a hierarchy. There's yes. white Brazilians, there's mixed Brazilians, there's black Brazilians, and then there's the petos, who are the darkest who are only a small percentage. Because when yeah. these men are coming over, they're coming and they're looking for mixed women or lighter complected women. But you're saying that these women are also vulnerable in Brazil. Yes, because that's the question. And that's the question. But there's the, the thing about the, 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 <clears throat> the, the place, the position that Brazil <clears throat> is in this relation between countries, you know? So uh, there's this idea that they can here, and that's the, the, the thing that Stephanie was saying, uh, talking about, you know, the objectification of the women. Because mm -hmm. you go to the supermarket Brazil and yeah. you can grab any type of women that you want. You have the white milk, you have the chocolate one, you have the mixed cappuccino, blah, 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 <laughs> blah. And the racial stuff in Brazil is huge in this because we are really uh, well known in the world and as a country that is all, all, uh, all mixed. So even the idea of racial, that they can come here and you know choose any type of color, skin, uh, 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 hair, and whatever, you know, this makes part of this ob 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 objectification. Yeah. OK, that's really good information. But just to educate people, what is it that makes the women vulnerable? What makes them more vulnerable? What is it that, that what's happening in Brazil that has the women so vulnerable? What's going on? Cultural, colonialism, capitalism. I would take like three hours to explain <laughs> why. Uh... So you're saying that there are people who are at economic disadvantages in Brazil. Also, but racially true and culturally okay. true. Mas, you ao know, mesmo the tempo, here is a gente também huge. tem uma cultura em que as mulheres são muito donas de casa também, oh, né? Muito, yeah. As mulheres, elas, elas detêm muito o controle financeiro. 
Então, existe, acho que talvez, uma vulnerabilidade emocional construída dentro dessas opressões. É, uau, isso é um ótimo ponto, né? Respirar para a é, é, é complexo. Uh, we also have, we have a, a culture of, uh, we, could, we could say housewives, but it's not, all, it's not really like this. The, the, the family is that women takes care of the money, takes Matriarca. care of the, uh, ma almost matriarchal, uh, kind of matriarchal, but the, the importance of these women in, this fa in, in those families. And in Brazil, we have a large number of families that has women as the owner, the, 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 the chief of the family, you know? And most of these women are Blacks, you know? So even though we have vulnerability, social vulnerability, economical vulnerability, we also have uh, another cultural stuff, cultural uh, connection that th these women, especially Black women in uh, 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 um, peripherias, né? neighborhood, uh, poor neighborhoods in countryside, that they are powerful too, you know? Okay. The, the, the women, for example, in religious from Africa, uh, uh, African, uh, Brazilian, <clears throat> Candomblé, for example, most of the terreiros, which is the place that take care of the Candomblé, Umbanda, most of the terreiros are owned by a woman, black woman, you know, so we have this woman also, okay. even though they are vulnerable, they are in these spaces, this, these spaces of, of power too. So it's more complex. It, it, well, it sounds very é complex. Mas tem um ponto que é muito importante. A gente também tem muitas mulheres brasileiras que também desejam se relacionar, não com homens americanos, mas com homens negros. E, e esse é um ponto importante do, do porquê. Talvez eles também consigam tanta abertura com moças em vídeos e tal. Isso yeah, é importante. Isso é, tipo, Mas eu sei que você tem foto, Deus do céu. Yeah. <laughs> This is another huge question, which is, uh, especially in terms of black uh, uh, women in Brazil, they want to, have, uh, to, to, to interact, to, to have a connection, relationships with black men. E não americanos, né? Que Not é... americans, but black men. Like the, the idea of the yes. black man. So when these black men comes, you know, they also, some of them uh, 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 believe that, you know, there's a, pos a possibility to make a connection, to have a, 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 a relationship. But this is a, a topic really complex also uh, too, because we should, we must talk about the situation of affection of the black woman in Brazil. We have a, a several concepts of this. Um, this the, the, the loneliness of the black woman. Black women are lonely is, in Brazil? Yeah, it, this is another, yeah. Wait, it's... why are they lonely? Lonely for black men? Yes. Yeah, black men, the society, like the, 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 the idea of the loneliness of the black woman is basically the idea that in a society that is racist, and misogynist, the worst, the worst, no, the last person that deserves love, that deserves to be taken care, that must be treated as a woman, or a human, you know, like respect, dignity, yeah. dignity, it's of the black woman. So the black woman usually is the woman, is the person that doesn't have the ties, the connections, the social, you know, like friends, friends, people surrounding her. Why? Why wouldn't, her. why wouldn't, and, and, okay, so, why? There's a, there's a, this is a, a construction from the colonialism and the uh, slaver, slaver. Uh, um, so, okay, so what are you considering black? So, you're saying that the black women are lonely. Are you, so Stephanie is considered a black woman in Brazil? Yeah. So but, you would be, you would be considered mixed here, right? But in Brazil, you're considered black. Yes. And so yeah. you're saying women yeah. like you would be lonely. But inside this question, you have the discussion about colorism. So who are, uh, who is more lonely? The darker skin woman, poor. the poor Dark woman, skin. the uh, fatter, uh, fatter woman, 
uh, woman from the, the, the uneducated or even educated, but the thing is like, even inside this, this, uh, uh, this uh, territory, we have like multiple layers of oppression. You so know, okay, exactly. so I want you to I want you to look at the screen right here. So this is a woman that is on the screen, and she had gotten with one of the passport bros by the name of Floyd, right? What would she be considered? Would she be considered black? Um, I we see that she's a little bit heavier. So are you saying that she's more vulnerable because we see that she's a little curvier? So are you saying that she's more vulnerable because she's curvier? Is she vulnerable because her skin has a little bit of brownness in it? Help, help educate us on that. I think it's difficult to say just about picture because you 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 really want to understand like which in which situation this person is. You know, uh, I don't know. For example, I don't know. I, I'll give a, a, a quick example. For example, he 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 was in Salvador. Yeah. Salvador of oh, this girl, for example, Parda, né? In Brazil, a mestiça. Yes. In Brazil, she's a mestiça. But she's a mestiça that. Na nossa lógica. In our racial logic. But you can see how she tries to cover up her blackness. You know, it's really complicated. Really? But the thing is... Sorry? Uh, no, I said really. Okay, so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, you're I, saying, I, so you're saying, just a little bit of blackness inside of you makes you lowers your worth, makes you more vulnerable. So even a girl like her, who would be considered a preference among black men here, she would be already somebody who is vulnerable in Brazil. And then so she would be an easy mark for these black men. But why why would a woman in a colorist society want a black man? Wouldn't they want a mestizo man as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Por que, que as mulheres querem homens negros numa sociedade colorista? É que o colorismo também tem a ver com gênero, né? Eu acho que... Eu acho que tem um, um, talvez um, um, um desejo de compreensão. Hum. Uma ideia de que um homem negro, eu me identificando como uma mulher negra, vivendo numa sociedade racista, que um homem negro vai me compreender mais e me respeitar mais. Porque também a gente vive num país que os homens brancos são extremamente violentos. Então, acho que são várias camadas. Uh, she said that she believes that it's probably because for black woman, uh, the idea that, that the black man can understand her better can connect better, you know, with the, uh, the, the suffering, the, the experience of life. And in a country like our country of Brazil, that uh, we have a lot of white men really violent, really uh, racist, that, you know, can't, can't see the humanity of the, the black people. Uh, she believes that probably is because of this. E tem um outro ponto. Eu sou vista como uma mulher negra, mas... Uh eu sou colocada no lugar da mulher negra de, dentro do Brasil, sensual, sexy, festiva, que é essa figura é, lasciva. Uma mulher negra talvez fosse mais escura do que eu não seria colocada nesse mesmo lugar, que não significa que eu estou num lugar melhor, mas significa que a gente é vista de, nós somos vistas de forma diferente conforme a nossa tonalidade de pele, e se tem um imaginário da mulher negra mestiça como sexual e da mulher negra mais escura como forte trabalhadora. <laughs> she said, uh, well, for example, she's she's seen as a black woman, <clears throat> but because of her traces, her phenotype, she's seen as a sensual woman, a woman to uh, a more sensual through sexuality. But no Brazil, in Brazil, we are talking about Brazil. Yeah, the only thing we are Brazilians, we are talking about Brazil. Uh -huh. yeah. Other place, other place. So, but another woman, darker, you know, darker, uh, darker skin, is is not seen as a sensual. Is seen more a woman to work, someone that will serve stronger. you, stronger, that can take whatever you know, whatever you give to her, she will do, she will make it. And this 
is a slaver heritage. I know that is everybody's tired, you know. Yeah. After, was saying, but this is important to understand how yeah. the, the slave ship, how the how the the colonial made our culture, and we still have some continuities that makes our minds, makes our our point of view to understand yeah. the thing. Look at so at so you're system. saying because your nose is slimmer, right, and your skin is lighter. So you're saying the phenotype, right? that yeah. you were considered more sexy rather than a person who has a wider nose, who is more negroid. Wow, oh, yeah. wow. Tem a cultura do que a gente chama aqui no Brasil, que eu acho que é importante dizer, da exótica. Yeah. E essa cultura, exótica. e a mulher que muitas vezes é vendida como tur para o turismo sexual é exatamente o meu estereótipo. Yeah. É, isso é importante pra caralho. Translate, uh... translate. <risos> Yeah, it's she's saying something really important. The thing is, uh, a, a woman with, uh, that looks like Stephanie is, exotic. Uh, is seen as exotic, you know, that's the exotic beauty, etc. And this kind of woman, the 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 tone of the call, uh, the skin, the the, uh, pheno the phenotype, etc., is the image that they sell to the tourism, sex. to the sex tourism, to the carnival, to the idea that. If you go to Brazil, you will find girls like her. You'll find girls like the girls that they they they, they show in the, the videos, you know. So it's also a, a reproduction of image, as Stephanie has been saying all night, is connected with sexism and it's pretty connected with racism. And why wow. this is why she as a feminist, a black feminist, stand against it and talk about it and denounce whoever she, need, she needs to do. Yeah, it, Ooh, it wait, it, wait, 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 wait. This is just so good. Helena, you would be considered a white Brazilian? Oh my God. I it, That's a very difficult question, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a, a friend that said to me that, no, you are parda, né? Is it mestiça? Mestiça. Parda, you are parda, but well, what I have to say about it is from my experience. I don't think I suffer what a, a black woman suffer right. because of racism in Brazil. So I can't claim oh. this 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 my place goodness. for me. So in Brazil, How? I am considered white. Outside Brazil, no, but in Brazil, How mostly most of the time, maybe. I am considered white. Interesting. And you, Tulio? Black? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Black. Okay. Do, did you date women who were darker complected or did you date women that were mestizo, like Stephanie? Uh, no, actually, I dated, uh, um, I dated also white women. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> I asked whether you dated black. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, darker, uh, the same okay. tone. Uh, date is a com is a complex. Uh, yeah. Yes. Porque a, acho que a gente acho que a gente tem que explicar para Tony aqui no Brasil a gente também tem a cultura do ficar. Yes. É, que talvez explique, inclusive... É... We're running out of time again. I don't want to do another... This is so good. I learned so much. This conversation can go on. Translate real quick, and then you all have to tell how people can oh, find you. Culture. We have the culture of to date, but the small dates, you know, like hookup, you know, like you meet someone one night... It's not one night stand, but, you know, like... So this is important in to the interactions also, you know? Wait a minute. So you're talking about hookups or dating seriously. Did you date black women seriously, Tulio, or were you just hooking up? No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, se eu já namorei outras mulheres. Mas é que eu sou só, tipo, é, é, I, I am eight years with her, you know? It's a long time. We have a, home, a long relationship. We are married, so, you know? And before this- I'm talking you know, before about before. Had... So I'm trying to find out whether or not dark-skinned men are dating dark-skinned women in Brazil. 
Você existe? Ah, yeah. É difícil se homens... Homens negros namoram mulheres de pele. Oh, my lord, the thing is gonna end again. Listen, listen. It's going to end, but I want you all to tell about your projects, right? So we're gonna come back in just for a quick moment, and you all will tell something about the look on your face. And Stephanie looking at you is telling a story that words are not saying right now. Uh huh. Look at that. Mmm. Listen, mm, I wonder. Listen, you know what? <clears throat> so you all know that I ask questions that people have stated in comments. So I see some of you were saying some very terrible things about, about, about me. But listen, you know, I'm going to get to the, the heart of the matter. So we're going to let them back in real quick. Somebody's saying this is getting stupid now. Child, if you feel that it's stupid, don't stay. You can, you know what to do. People love to wage their insults. <laughs> Bethany, you ruined the comments. You ruined the comments just by being here. You ruined that. You did. <laughs> I'm not I'm talking not no not Stephanie Bethany there was a person in the comments there was a person in the comments <laughs> all right so we have here let's see all right okay so we have we have we have Helen Helena on the big screen now and we have Stephanie and um on the small screen so um so question for so you were so listen i we were on a train of thought that we are going to just p skirt past because the colorism in brazil i don't understand you know there's colorism all over the world but you know it is it shows up differently and i think it is it, it is it is just it's it's nuance per country but people, people want to know, Tulio, did you date dark skin? Like date seriously, like give your love to dark skin women in Brazil before you got married. Did you give your love or was it just kind of like, oh, you know, I'm passing through? I think we should explain that in fact, in Brazil, we are practically the exception, because we are negros de class media, se relacionando entre nós. Porque uhum. lá para eles é muito comum, uhum. mas aqui para a gente a ascensão social está tá associada a se relacionar com pessoas brancas. Então acho que você devia explicar isso para ela. Ela está dizendo que é uma coisa importante que nós, como um casal, somos mais uma exceção no Brasil em termos de como nós somos, porque o belief social em Brasil for blacks usually is connected with to get married to relate to dates to relate with a white white person so it's more difficult not rare but more difficult when black people that uh, social worker upper class as us <clears throat> are married are a couple you know because usually you see this like a, 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 a well succeeded man black man with a white girl a well succeeded black woman with a white man. So this is something in the, um, how could I say, the the love economics in Brazil, yeah. in the rate of love con economics in Brazil, that is really important to, to discuss. You so, know, you're, so, you're, so you're saying that black people and even brown skin people is rare in Brazil when you're upper socioeconomic, it'll be a black person with a white person in Brazil. And that the, the white person is raising the status of the black person. But then wouldn't the white person's status be lowered by being with the black person? Sorry? Wouldn't that white person's status lower down by being with a black person? Uh, 
a ideia de que, assim, bom, se é para a pessoa negra é bom estar com uma pessoa branca, mas se para a pessoa branca não é um lower é, status, aí a gente tem que explicar a cultura da miscigenação. Eu acho que a gente pode as... explicar que é... dentro da nossa... Acho que, resumidamente, dentro da nossa cultura, resumidamente, as pessoas brancas, elas vendem a ideia de que, ao se relacionar com negros, elas não são racistas. Hum, boa. Translate. Um ótimo. Boa. Yeah, uh, in the Brazil culture, uh, the idea that white people dating black people, they show to, to society that they are not racist. And this is important about Brazil, because in Brazil, we are a racist country that doesn't want to talk about racism. In Brazil, you are afraid or you are ashamed to show that you are racist. So we avoid the racial conflict, but we have racial uh, racism uh, or um, organizing are the, every Are, are the black the people, the black people who date the white people, are they treated well or do the white people abuse the black people that they date or marry? Uh, well, we have, uh, this is difficult to, to say for sure, but we have a lot of stories of people get treated very bad, especially for the family. And also have stories of people saying that it's all okay. E só para finalizar, para ela entender, é muito mais comum entre as pessoas pobres aí você ter os casais negros. Yeah, and it's more common into the the poor people, the lower class people. You have the black families, the black couples. Por isso que mulheres negras de classe média muitas vezes almejam um homem negro. Por isso que homens negros, uh, americanos ou até mesmo africanos fazem tanto sucesso aqui. That's why black girls from the upper class, medium class... E que estudaram na universidade. That study, high educated, they, they desire or want a black man. And that's why black men, American black men, or even African uh, black men... Uh, uh, make so much success with these girls because it's the idea that they can connect with a black man, you know, a black man that is in the same uh, uh, level and uh, the same uh, social condition. Oh, you know? wow. So part of the vulnerability then is in the lack of access of middle class black people to be able to get with other middle, so middle class black women in Brazil, even middle-class mixed women, to be able to get with a black man. It's very rare. And so when these men come from other countries, they're seen as a novelty. They're seen as something special. They're seen as, oh, maybe I'll get the chance to be with a black man. Maybe he will marry me and take me back to the States. Maybe I'll be able to have that black family because it's so rare. Yeah, but this is a part, you know, I don't totally believe This is uh, something important oh, that Stephanie brought. But in terms of passport bros, yes. I don't believe that that's the case because most of the girls that we are seeing these videos in the 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 things, they are not these girls that we are talking about, the upper class black woman, dark skin, etc. Okay. It's uh, 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 the discussion is nice. We are you know bringing the the, the okay. whole panel. But uh, when you talk about passport bros, we are yes. talking more about these lower, vulnerable girls, poor girls can be black, but also makes it that they, you know, they, as a predators. Uh, e no caso dos vídeos do Austin, às vezes ele, como ele chegava em, em qualquer mulher, fazia uma pergunta, e embora, é, são mulheres que às vezes estudaram e tal, mas... A abordagem que elas tinham, a abertura que elas davam para ele, tem mais a ver com o fato de a gente ter essa cultura da, da abertura, da educação, do que necessariamente o interesse afetivo delas com ele. Oh, yeah, this is important. Uh, sometimes, even the video, like the way that he, he, he uh, approached, uh, approached them, sometimes they are just answering, you know, someone arrives with you, uh, on you, and asks something about the beach, the, the city, and they were being nice, oh, nice. Yeah. you know, yeah, like being polite, you know, and the way that they use this, the image, the, the, the title, the, the way that he was commenting or, or, or letting the people comment, 
because this is also something interest interesting. I'm a sociologist, like so everything is interesting mm -hmm. for me. <laughs> sometimes they he doesn't need to say anything. He puts the image and the people, the crowd, they comment. So if they, he doesn't say something, he is allowing them to say, you know? So he, he doesn't even need to take, say something because all these guys, all the, the, the crowd of this crazy predators, they are already saying for him, you know? Mm -hmm. What are they, what do you mean saying? Saying what? They're saying, saying oh. Like, these girls, they are for sale. These girls are whores. These girls. Oh, so you're saying the girls don't even speak. They just show them. And then the guys are saying that, like, kind of like a grocery list, like showing. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And he's not so, saying to them, you know, don't say this. That's wrong. You should not. Got you, no. got you, got you, got you. So you're saying, so just last, 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 last up to say, and then I'm going to let you all just give your closings, right? You're saying that they're not getting with the middle class women. They're not getting with the upper class women, that they're getting with women who are poor, vulnerable, desperate and desperate in more than one way. Desperate for a black man, desperate for. For um, maybe a nice date out with an American, just desperate for. I, I don't know what else. Yeah, that's that's why I, I would not like to mix because I think it's different conversations. Um, in terms of passport bros, and Captain Cosso, this uh, we are talking about the vulnerability and the condition of these women. The conversation about black men, the desire for black men, the dif dif difficulty for the upper class, uh, black couples, etc., uh, and such. Uh, I think that we should not put in the same uh, I see, in the same I see. bowl, you know? I see. Because can mix, and I think that make more confused and even wrong in terms of, you know, to be a little bit more uh, um, specific. So the thing is, uh, uh, which brings for as much as I know, as much as Stephanie told me about, as much as I have saw the, the I have saw the videos and... Uh, uh, the question is the vulnerability, how this woman is in, in this place and social, economical. And because of this, also, as Stephanie uh, spoke, uh, 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 emotional vulnerability that makes them kind of more uh, vulnerable for this predator uh, behavior that these men bring to uh, come here to do. Eu tenho tanto um exemplo que era o que eu estava lendo agora. Um homem negro americano me mandou mensagem dizendo que ele sabe que eu sou patrocinada por um daddy branco. Porque, na visão desses homens, é impossível se chegar no Brasil e ter uma mulher negra arquiteta que vive bem, que mora bem e que ainda tem um relacionamento com uma pessoa negra. Eles têm já uma visão estereotipada do que eles vão encontrar aqui. Peraí, só tô muito, é. vamos lá. She, she, she's giving an example. She received a, a message for a black guy calling her uh, uh, that she's <laughs> she's sponsored by a black, uh, a white sugar daddy, because in his mind, it's impossible to come to Brazil to find a black girl, a upper class black girl, architect, high educated, that lives well, that has a good life, you know, that is married with a black guy, which is doing well, uh, enterprise, blah, et cetera. You know, this is, in, this is impossible. You know, so they make all these projections, all these fantasies that, well, if this woman, this black woman is behaving like this, probably she is sponsored by a, 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 a white. OK, OK. Uh, well, you sure know what? I, I wanted to talk about that, but we have run out of time. I, I did want to add, lastly, when I asked you what was it that made the women vulnerable, you talked about the emotional vulnerability. And that's when you started talking about wanting a black man. So it's like you brought that into the conversation. And so now to say that it's not relevant, I feel like the nuance of this is far greater than we could have covered in this conversation. I learned a lot. I Some of the questions that I asked were questions that I saw people typing in the comments and wanted to be able to get an answer for. 
I am going to read the apples after you all get off of the air, but I want you all to tell, tell people about the projects that you're working on, how they can connect with you. There were some people that wanted to know about your manhood project. There are people who want to know about Stephanie and what Stephanie is into and how they can connect and support. So please take this time to let the people know, because I know it's late in the United States. It's even later in Brazil. So I am going to let you all give your closing, and then we're going to jump out of here. We're going to talk to the, the couple first, then Helena. We're going to let you give your closing. Um, Helena, but, but you've been quiet for so long. Tell, give, give me your final thoughts on everything that we talked about, even with the colorism, everything. Just final thoughts. Yeah, um, I am learning a lot <laughs> with this wonderful couple. And uh, my final thoughts is... Um, I think we shouldn't uh, uh, focus on whatever the, it's happening on uh, any culture, but really put the highlights uh, in the, the predators, take the highlights and bring to them. And I'm saying that, that to all the people that are asking those questions, uh, that uh, it's nice that Everybody's so curious about our ways, and I think we can may maybe have many shows about Brazilians. We are a really big country, and, and we have a really rich culture, but I think the highlights is on them. The, the highlights is about this passport bros and why they shouldn't keep doing what they're doing. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. And then now, Tulio and, um, and Stephanie, please give us your final words on the whole conversation, everything from beginning to end, just your final words on that. Eu acho que eu queria finalizar dizendo que eu estou muito feliz que a gente tenha trocado, porque eu acho que é muito importante a gente entender que, de, independente das diferentes culturas, a gente está pensando no bem-estar de mulheres e pessoas negras pelo mundo, ponto. Então, eu acho que é muito mais importante a troca. E que eu tenho amigos americanos, o Túlio também, e que nós trocamos no sentido de trocar e conhecer, aprender, entender, se abrir para uma outra cultura. E esses homens dos Passport Bros, eles não estão fazendo isso. Eles estão vindo numa lógica de deixar um rastro de, des de destruição e não de compartilhar trocar e compreender a nossa cultura e, e, e nós enquanto pessoas. That's beautiful. Uh, she's really happy for this this conversation, this exchange. Uh, we have uh, uh, American friends and we have been talking with them about this. And so even though despite the different the cultural differences, we think that we can go get a connection, bring a dialogue and to learn uh, from each other. And for her, it's really important to talk, to denounce, to expose these passport bros, because unfortunately, they are not uh, um, they, they are not pursuing the connection. They are not pursuing the dialogue. They are they are pursuing exploration. They are pursuing domination. They are pursuing oppression. So this is not how we should talk about uh, exchange cultural exchange. So that's why it's important to talk about this. And as a feminist, she believes that this kind of behavior affects us, the women, uh, and the, the, the whole society. You just want to say something? No. Say something. Say something. Say something. Say something. Thank Yeah, I, I really would like to thank you. I'm sorry the... The craziness because I spend the whole day working and giving classes yeah. and st st studying French and uh, well. Yeah, so no, you know what? We we're, we're all tired. I'm tired. Helena's tired. Everybody has to work tomorrow. But I thought the conversation was really important, and so I appreciate you all coming out and having the conversation. I appreciate oh. you all answering tough questions and answering personal questions and answering cultural questions you know, as, as best as you could. So I am appreciative. Thank you for that. Um, Tulio, Stephanie, people want to know how to get in touch with you um, on your social media. They want to know, Stephanie, if you, have a, if you have a YouTube, 
Tulio, if you have a way for people to connect. If not, then let people know how they can support the projects you're working on. Um, I have an uh, Instagram, uh, which is Tulio Custodio, well, that's my name. Um, pretty easy. And uh, Stephanie has uh, S T E underline R I D, Stair Rib from Esther Ribeiro, her name, Stephanie Ribeiro. And mine is Tulio Custodio, uh, T-U-L-I-O-C-U-S-T-O-D-I-O. -O. Yeah, it's right there <laughs> on the screen, the right there. The, the, your name is right yeah. underneath you, so it's right there. All right, perfect, wonderful. Helena, how do people support you? How do people well, stay up with what you're doing? Yeah, well, I work as a psycho psychotherapist, and I, and I do also some lectures, mostly about economic psychology and veganism. So I don't know if there are any vegans around uh, the people that are listening to us, but I talk about this on my, my Instagram. It is PSI underline Elena Mourão. That is my name. I will I will do the same thing that Stephanie did. It was a good idea. <laughs> That's my my Instagram, and I have a site that is Elena Mourão uh, dot com dot br. Oh, wonderful, wonderful! Thank you, thank you, thank you. This was a great conversation. Thank you all so thank you for coming out and participating. It was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. So thank you for hanging in there. You know, hopefully we can have more conversations. Hopefully we can bridge the gap. One of the things yeah. that I was hoping that we would have talked about during this broadcast is the fact that the passport bros are not creating community. They're not ingratiating themselves into the expat community, that they are coming in as vultures. They do not mingle with other Americans who are there. They don't they they don't support, you know, healthy relationships between Brazilians and Americans, that they're coming in to get what they can take and then and then and, and, and take from the country, not give to it. That was one of the things I was hoping that we would have talked about from some of the questions, but we didn't get to that. But that is one of the things that I've heard from other people, that they say that these passport bros, that other black men who are there from America who are not on the same mission, that they just walk right, right past them. They, they don't talk to them. They don't mingle with them. They don't create community. They don't build. They come and they take and then they leave. And they're also... I'm going to show some videos tomorrow, some videos that will make you sick to your stomach <laughs> of passport bros taking advantage of homeless black women in Brazil, <sighs> that so the woman asks for money, asks for help, and they're helping themselves to the women. Oh, the money's in my hotel room. Yeah. I'm also wondering how much crime is committed there, how much SA, assault, and those types of things. I also wonder about that. You know, mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of conversations that can surround this Passport Bros movement because there's a lot of things that they're doing that you all would be disgusted. In tomorrow's video, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. You'll hear it from their mouths. When I told you that Austin said that he was a sex tourist, you didn't believe me. You argued with me. But I'm telling you now, I have video of a man talking about this, this young, young black Brazilian girl, young lady who was begging. And instead of giving her money or giving her food or helping her, he gave her something else. Right. Wow. There's a more sinister side to this. As well as, look, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to show you all the video tomorrow because this is going a lot deeper than, than, than many of us realize. So that's one thing that I, I want us to talk about because it's wrong. It's predatory. It's wrong. It's exploitative. It's antisocial. And it is, it's harmful. It's harmful to the image of black men worldwide. It's harmful to the image of Americans. It's harmful. 
They're not going over there looking for wives. They're not getting wives. If they were going over there and they were falling in love with googly heart eyes and they were and they were marrying, that would be a different story. But they're doing this as a way to control and to dominate and to take advantage of. I'm also going to show you all a video of men saying some very, very terrible, terrible, terrible things about the women. Just take, mm, I I'll play that in tomorrow's video. So thank you all for coming out. I appreciate you all participating in the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm going to read the thank apples. You. So thank you. You all have a very good rest of your evening. I will write you all and... And just thank you all further. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sonia, Sonia, yes. I have to say that I am honored to be with all of you. I, and I am also have to say it. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Oh, that is so wonderful. And Tulio, thank you for being a man on the broadcast. Thank you for your translation skills. How did you learn English so well? Um, not so well, but I lived. I I was at Vanderbilt University during my my undergrad, and during my masters, uh, I spent some time in New York, New York, and and oh. Okay, <clears throat> it's perfect. Yeah, nobody's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> How wonderful! All right, well, thank you all so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We will talk behind the scenes. Thank you. All right. So on that note, you know what I am. Um, it has been it's it's been it's been amazing. It's been amazing participating in this conversation. I learned a lot. I asked a lot of questions that were not necessarily questions that I had from myself, but questions that I saw people writing online and questions that people wanted to know the answers to. So I was a conduit for you know different types of questioning so i appreciate i appreciate all of you coming out let's go ahead and what is that that we hear it's apple time again <laughs> all right so i'm gonna read the cash apps that have come in and um there's let's let's get through all of them Okay, so Rodney sends two dollars and says, "Where is God in any of this? I see lovers of themselves." Well, you know what? That is an interesting question. April sends four one one and says, "He made the block hot for the PP Bros first apple." Okay, 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 okay. All right, it's true. Broadcasting like that and broadcasting their predilections. Dorothy sends a dollar and says, "My Colombian tourist guide friend." fights with them too. I guess so, you know, when it's like that. Audra sends $5 and says, get into about Tulio's project. Well, you know what? He gave you his Instagram. So go there and look into the manhood project that, or the masculinity project that he's a part of. I'm sure he'll share that information with you. Audra sends five. Okay. That was Audra's. Let's see. Tony sends a dollar and says, when a man loves a car, he becomes a mechanic. So you're talking about when men love women, so they become masters of women by learning them inside out. Well, you know what? We have seen that when it comes to men loving women, that a lot of what is disguised as love is really loving what the women can do for them, you know, utilitarian in, in a utilitarian way. Torian sends 555 and says, awesome, awesome journalism, Tanya, you go, girl. Thank you. I appreciate that. Essence sends some Bitcoin and says, men don't love women. They love what women can do for them. If you have no use to them, they don't care about you. And that's one of the videos that we put up about hospice care, husbands and wives, the difference, how men are six times more likely to leave their wives when they get diagnosed with cancer versus women staying there till the very end. It's unbelievable and, and, and sad as well. Kim sends 777 and says, are groups in Brazil warning women about sex tourism? And you know what? They, I don't know. They should be warning them about sex tourism. Absolutely. Taisha sends 111 and says, first cash app, go Auntie Tanya. Well, you know, that's the third one. So, you know, I'm going to have to get up and bust a wine for you all. Taisha says, third cash app sent. Those cash apps, y'all. Okay, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Latricia says men are taught war. Women, wait, war with our illusion, taught illusion of families. Okay, men are taught war. Women are taught illusion of families. And she says they are mastering manipulation and promises to use women. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sasha sends 777 and says this conversation needs to be had. Thanks, sis. I appreciate that. L sends a dollar and says, not charging is a nonprofit organization. What? Hold oh, on. What? She says, I'm just effing ard, but I guess with her regarding sexual Fred. Wait, hold on. Not charging is oh, you know what l you have to send the bitcoin so that you could type longer jasmine sends twenty dollars and says first apple i love your content thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you latricia sends two dollars and says passport boys are banking on the lies that no that no longer work in the u.s and you know what i really want to get into some more of the colorism conversation about the different layers of it in Brazil. I think that that was so very interesting just to see how colorism lands all across the globe. Taisha sends 111 and says, Tanya's facial expression making me crash. You're so funny. And Jay sends $3 and says, money is an equalizer that buffers race. Very interesting, I wonder. I wonder, I wonder. And then Lisa Roxanne, let's accept the Bitcoin and see what she says over there and she says let's see she says heart 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 knockout all right wonderful well you know what listen we have gotten in more than three first times so i'm gonna as tired as i am i am going to try to bust a wine for you all i'm gonna try let me get the music. Listen, I am tired as you don't know what, but you know what? Listen, I'm gonna find a little, a little hip. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Listen, I'm tired when I tell you I'm tired. Here, 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 here. Thank you to all the people who came out. Thank you to the first time Cash Apples. Thank you to the guests. Thank you to the people who were interested in this conversation. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness. Listen. Listen, listen. Well, you know what? We still have our guests behind the scenes. Let's see if we can get one of them to do a little wine. Come on, Helena. Give me a little wine. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Listen, you listen. You're from Brazil. I know you got some wine. Me, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let me see some. Hey! <laughs> How cute! So now we have to get Stephanie. Stephanie, come on, girl. Let's see it. Come on, come on, Stephanie. I know it's late out there. Come on. appreciate you all so much. You know what? You all hang out behind the scenes. I'm going to grab you all as soon as we get off here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you all so much for coming out. Listen, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you all in the next broadcast. We will get the self-love lessons tomorrow. I just want to, I got to let all of this process all over me. And you can, listen, I will see you all in the next video. <laughs> All right, peace everybody, peace. Thank you for coming through.